Us. You know, we walked outside, trees everywhere, there's metal everywhere, just everything's, you know, just destroyed. One town decimated, at least two killed, dozens hurt amid the frantic search for survivors. We're there with the very latest, plus a look at more severe storms on the move today. Then dramatic rescue. We're coming! A father and daughter pulled to safety over the weekend after their jet ski sunk. Their rescue caught on camera. I'm gonna pull you by your vest, okay? It's up to you. How a sunset ride nearly turned tragic and their important message about water safety. Plus, hot stuff. With summer right around the corner, we've got five questions you need to answer before launching into that pre-summer diet. The healthy ways you can look and feel your best. And oh brother, Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson, one of Hollywood's most famous bromances. Could they actually be bros? They're my mom, is it? Yeah. And she says, Woody, I knew your dad. The details behind the story everyone's talking about. You got a chapter in one of those books on jumping to conclusions? Today, Thursday, April 20th, 2023. I ain't got too much time. From Murray, Kentucky. And Green Bay, Wisconsin. From Caravan, Texas. On a sister's trip. Here on spring break. From Portland, Maine. Wishing my uncle a happy 87th birthday. In and over us. We love you, Uncle Kevin. Besties. From Cumming, Georgia. And Aiken, South Carolina. Here for my sweet 16. From Rosemont, Minnesota. On a mother son trip. From Barnett, Tennessee. It's our silver anniversary. 25 years married to the love of my life. Woo! And we're back. It's 812 with your health. It's that time of year again with summer on the way. People are starting to think about ways that they can look and feel their best. Yes, but before you launch into any sort of calorie cutting or fasting programs, there are some important health factors to consider. And here with the five questions you need to answer before starting any summer diet, we've got Vanessa Rosetto here. She's a registered dietitian and CEO of Kalina Health. Vanessa, good morning. Hi, good Vanessa. Good to see you. Good to see you. So good to see you. Okay, these are the key questions before you start falling for things yeah. you might see online here and there. Yeah. The first one is fundamental. Is it safe? Correct. Is it safe? A lot of people try to cut calories yeah. and they think like, oh, my friend eats a thousand calories a day, so mm -hmm. I should do that too. So like some general rules of thumb, you should divide your weight by 2.2 Okay. times that by 25. So oh. pretend you are 150 pounds. Okay. Your kilograms would be 68 times 25 would give you 1700 calories a day. Oh, for, to figure out to your figure calorie calorie how many you should have. So okay. maintaining would be 1700 and then you wouldn't want to go below about 1300. Okay. 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 Right. Also, what are these heavy restrictions? If we're yeah. omitting anything, yeah. if we're only drinking water or yeah. special juices, it's no. probably not good. That's so let's not do that. All right, which brings us to the next panel, which is, is it sustainable? Because some things you can do for a day or two days, yeah. and then that's it. But you actually need fuel to function. That's right. So please, everyone, eat protein and fat. You need <laughs> yeah. that to yeah. fuel your body. Also, fiber and hydration. The things that people don't realize in the yeah. summer, digestion is slowed. Oh, okay. So what will help to speed I it up? Yeah. Fiber, fiber and water, okay. right? So these are ways for you to help yourself in the summer. And also fiber helps with weight management. So if you're eating extra vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits at you know, lunch and dinner and a snack, you're gonna be able to get to that goal. What is enough protein and yeah. fat? Again, it does depend. Yeah. So on average, fat is about 20 to 35% mm -hmm. of your ca like calorie requirement. And then the protein, back to that calculation, it could be anywhere from one to 1 1.2 grams per kilogram. Okay. So if you were 68 kilograms, then okay. you would have about 68 to about 82 grams per day. And for context, four ounces of chicken is 31 grams of protein. And how about hydration? Should you, how much should you be drinking? Guys, we need like 90 ounces of water. Which is how much, mm. how many cups? Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's more than eight cups. More. More okay. than eight cups, right? And so okay. what I like to do is get a 32 ounce container and then I just fill that up two One of times. Those two big to jugs times. that yeah. people walk around with. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Our next question, is it balanced? Yes. When you said 25% fat, I was 
was like, great, just eat a bunch of French fries. But yeah. not all calories <laughs> yeah. are created equal. Not all calories are created equal. So guys, like, let's not omit certain food groups. Okay. Also, everyone, carbs are not bad. They are our major energy source, please. Yes. We need them for a fuel. I know, but we're also scared of carbs now. We're scared of carbs because no one taught us how to eat them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the appropriate amount for you? And what does a carb mean, right? One slice of bread, a half a cup of rice. And so when you get your mind around that, it's easier for you also, to digest. And also, by the way, there are carbs in lentils. There That's are right. carbs in avocado. Yeah, there are things you wouldn't think about. In broccoli. Yeah. Right? They're, so, just different kinds they're different of carbs. They're different kinds of carbs. So it's not always bread and cookies. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's move down to this one. So this is a good one. Is it realistic for your lifestyle? Because we all go out to dinner. We go to restaurants. You might have this regimen. And some people are like, I can't go out to eat. I'm on this special diet. Right. And so that's not fun. And nobody no. wants to hang out with you. <laughs> so... so Think about what your limits are. What yeah. is your life like? And how do you really want to incorporate that? And right. then is there really a better way? If you're this really busy mom with a big job and you're cooking for a family of yeah. six, then how is this all this restriction going to work? Are yeah. we buying all these separate meals for people? And then that becomes cost prohibitive. So really, what is going to be sustainable long term mm -hmm. without having you lose your mind? Got okay. It. <laughs> and then, I mean, that, you just brought it up, cost. Because yeah. is it affordable? I mean, sometimes it's more expensive. It's often more expensive to eat healthfully. That's yeah. right. That's right. Because when you think about these fads, right, there's like a juice cleanse. Yes. And like, you, know, you have to buy the whole system. And then that's costing you hundreds of dollars over the month. Mm -hmm. And then it's not sustainable. So then mm -hmm. all that money goes by the wayside. So you want to do the math. Like, can I achieve the goal while not blowing up my pocket? And then also mm -hmm. there are professionals out there, right? A dietitian, most of us take insurance. Wait, what? Yes, dietitians take insurance. Oh, I didn't know that. And the cost is probably a copay. You yeah. all have the benefit. So seek out Use help. It. Use yeah. help. Just like you go to the doctor, you go to the dentist, go to the dietitian. Okay. Right. Then you job. would do all that hard math over there. Yeah, yeah. Right. I would do it for you. Okay, yes. Vanessa, thank Vanessa, you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you. it. All right, we got our main friends, our Massachusetts friends, and they're at the start of the Boston Marathon. I'm going for my qualifying time in two weeks. If I start in your hometown, I want to see you guys there Good next year. And you know what, Bill? There's a huge crowd out here. Everybody's from Maine. Yes, look at all the, Hold up your sign. I love Armenia. Nobody's in school. Here you go. Look at this. What's your school, honey? Uh, they go to Mount Ararat Middle School. They went. They Wait, went. Look, yeah. Wait, look at this sign. Can I borrow it just We're for a second? A Wait. I love this. I like that. I just woke up. <laughs> that's the best sign out here. Y'all were happy. I woke came. up like 10 minutes ago. Thank that's, you. that's all of our thought bubbles. Maine is in the house there. represented, I know, man. Love it. Good crowd. Oh, Guys, love coming love up it. ahead, Kate Snow with a story. All parents and young people need to see an inside look at a college course gaining steam at schools across the country, all about helping students discuss and improve their mental well-being. That's an important one. Kate will have that for us. But first, this is Today on NBC. with our series, What Works Today, focusing on people finding solutions to problems in their community. Yeah, and this morning, a new kind of college class is teaching students a fundamental life skill 
And that's how to become more resilient. NBC's mm -hmm. senior national correspondent Kate Snows here with that story. Good morning, Kate. Yeah, Kate. good morning, guys. This is a really exciting idea that is catching on. It's called Radical Health. The program, it started in 2020 during COVID, and it's already spread to more than 20 college campuses across the country. The idea, helping students create connections and cope with mental health issues early before anything reaches a crisis point. Today's college students have lived through a lot. The pandemic disrupted their education. In the 2020 to 2021 school year, more than 60% of college students met the criteria for at least one mental health problem. And there just aren't enough counselors on campuses to go around. But in this classroom at Pace University in New York, a new approach. Like, you're not your thoughts. Right. Like, I'm not my emotions. I'm not my it's called Radical Health, an elective at Pace. Once a week, for four weeks, students talk openly about their mental well-being. I tell myself the fact that I'm looking for motivation means that it's there somewhere. Week one is about the importance of making connections with other students. Week two, setting priorities. Stress management, building resilience, and self-care are taught in week three. And the last week is about looking forward and making good decisions. Anything else? What can we do going forward? Sophomore Stephanie Spruck is the student guide for this group. This is different than therapy because it's peer led. You are hearing from peers who are like you. The whole point is to teach students skills so they can get ahead of problems. They also make sure people know where to turn for help on campus. They're equipped to cope before they reach a crisis point. Liz Feld is CEO of Radical Hope, the foundation that funds the program. Young people all around the country have shared with us that they're missing two things in their lives, meaningful connections and resilient skills to power through the regular challenges that we all experience every day in our lives. 19-year-old freshman Anaya Zayas lost her mom during the pandemic. She says the connections she's made here helped her realize she's not alone. Going through that with COVID and with, you know, being isolated, in this group we talked a lot about getting to know ourselves to help ourselves, you know. I've started to let myself feel like my grief and my pain. Olivia Rich is a junior who transferred to Pace. I think the program has helped just kind of create a toolbox for me because it's teaching you many areas like awareness, affirmations, you know, self-talk, and I think all those things are really important to have. The program has already reached more than 10,000 students, and a whopping 95% said they would recommend Radical Health to a friend, a place to build strength. Y'all have just been a huge like support system for me. And make friends in the process. So a lot of students who've gone through the Radical Health program then return as guides, some of them for two or three years. On some campuses, this is now a required course for freshmen entering. This coming fall, it's going to be on more than 30 campuses supporting first-year students. And guys, it has even spread beyond college campuses. The NFL is using this with some of their rookie players now. By the way, it's such a smart use yeah. of time in college. When you think about all the courses you, mm -hmm. you take, right. it's just right. a chunk of time for that. And Something. it's not a lot. It's like an hour and a half it's once brilliant. a week. Why not? Yeah, why that not? Making the connections with others yeah. on this kind of deep yeah, a lot of them were saying. I would have majored in that had I. Yeah, yeah. Right? I love that it's peer led too. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them were saying they've made friends that they're going to have all through four years. Of wow. College. Remember the stat that we taught most in mental health advocacy is that from the moment someone experiences a symptom of mental health, probably that age group, yeah. to when they actually get help, ten years goes by. That's Ooh, crazy. Ten years. Yeah. Before you even you know. Yeah. So having that resiliency, mm -hmm. learning those tools is yeah. a big, big cool. needed thing. Thanks, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. Kate, appreciate it. All right, later on today, uh, we have NBC News Daily and streaming on NBC News Now. More yeah. on that. Go on. That's right. Cool. All right, yeah. Kate, thank you. Coming up next, from fashion to jewelry and hair care, we've got Glamour Sam Barry right here. She's going to introduce us to some sustainable brands that really are giving back during Earth Month. You're going to feel good about these. But first, this is today on NBC.
We're back with our series today, Climate Super Solutions. April is, of course, Earth Month, and this morning we're going to introduce you to some sustainable brands. You may not have heard of them, but they're really making waves. And here with some standouts is Samantha Berry, Glamour's Editor-in-Chief. Sam, good morning. Good morning. These are all companies you can feel good about and are making beautiful products. Let's start with Ring Bear, because these are wedding bands for men, but tell me about the sustainability angle. Yeah, so they're for men, they're for the planet, and they're hopefully forever. It <laughs> all goes to plan. But the whole point is we're going into wedding season now and there's a lot of bands and um, rings that are dedicated to women. This is for men and they really look at sustainability practices, including the wood that they use in the box is all recycled, eco-friendly wood. A lot of new gold in the world, 75% uh, of gold consumption is from newly minted gold. Mm. Ring Bear uses recycled gold. It, it, it is, um, it's looking at their consumption and it basically, they want to be carbon neutral as well. And mm. I think when you're looking at brands and you're looking at what their sustainability values are. You're looking for their supply chain, you're looking for how they recycle, and you're looking for what their carbon neutral um, so here like. you have the, the everything down to the box mm -hmm. uses recycled exactly. materials and they, they are beautiful, unusual. Okay, this is a basics company that makes every single one of their products out of recycled fabric. This is Parade. Tell Parade. me about the company. Glamour is a huge fan of Parade. Talked about a lot in the office. Um, it was set up by a 25-year-old daughter of Columbia, Colombian immigrants, and it is a gender-inclusive and size-inclusive brand, and everything that they make is sustainability. So it goes from X, uh, extra small to 5XL, and it really, they do sustainability in a couple of ways, including, yeah, uh, they make their clothes from sustainable fibers. When you go to the checkout, 1% of the sales can go to a um, eco organization of your choice and then they give you the ability to recycle your um, used clean um, underwear. Yeah. Which was, Recycling <laughs> underwear. Yeah. Okay, you're about to lose me, but they yeah. figured out how to do yeah, it. Yeah, okay. you send it back You can, and, and they can go into things like housing insulation. Yes. Okay, great. That is Parade. Now, we have a female founder at the helm of this jewelry company uh, founded right here in New York. Tell me and about it. And it's Souvenir. And I think if you're looking to be sustainable, I think looking at where are the people, the crafts, um, men and women that are making stuff in your area. This is made, made locally in Brooklyn. It's all made to order. It's all made from upcycled, recycled material. I'm a big cool. fan of a summer tote. Yes, as we're going so in. cute. Exactly. And again, everything is carbon neutral. Everything is made to order. And the great thing about this company, which I think is a really interesting fact, every season, the amount of waste that is made by this company fits into a Ziploc bag. Wow. Souvenir. And they're based in Brooklyn. And I, li I like this barrette. You know, exactly. I'm a barrette person. That's so cute. Okay, great. Let's we'll see and if we can get you one. Okay, <laughs> finally. Oh, I just stole it. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give it back. I was just looking at it. Okay, finally, we have Ceremonia. This is a fan, uh, a brand. Uh, what do we have here? So basically, this is one of the brands that Glamour has in the buy women, right? So we, okay. we highlight women-led um, brands. This is a Latinx-owned um, company, and it's all about the natural fibers um, and natural ingredients for hair care. Okay. And I think, when, again, when you're looking at the sustainability of brands, you're looking at what does their supply chain look like? What, how, what is in their packaging? Yes. So for, for this um, company, they're really they're aiming to get to 100% of recycled material and how they package. Um, they've uh, dropped their carbon emissions by 32%. And it's really, again, looking at what are the values of each company. They've got great hair masks. Um, they use natural environment, uh, natural ingredients. And so their, um, their mission is to be good for the environment as well. I'm glad, you know, it's always a good conversation to have and to look into, you know, what these companies' values are, what they stand for, and how does my Love barrette look? Up. Are you Great. into it? Yeah. Okay, so check them out. If you want more information, we'll put it on our website. Carson, over to you. I mean, Well, thank you guys very much. Anna Castro's from New Orleans. We were talking about a little football there. But the chef here putting a creative spin on some favorite Mexican dishes. This is delicious. Muy oh, look at that. A little sweet potato. So we'll have Anna cook for us, and you'll learn all about it. But first, this is Today on NBC.
to some Plaza Picks, guys. Okay, I had a chance to meet Rhonda and Twyla. Cool. They are from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's Twyla's 43rd birthday. Celebrate. Oh, they're so cute. Carson was out there with Sarah and Michelle. They started watching oh, today wild. together. Look at this. 30 years <laughs> ago, they were college oh. freshmen oh, yeah. roomies. Crazy stories from the ladies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They look fun. And then I got to meet Adam and Kathleen from Springfield, Texas. Look, oh. they're, they, they're having a gender reveal. I'm shocked. It's a girl. First baby due in August. How sweet. I know. Oh, cool. All right, Carson, over to you. Smeggy Plough shocks so well. <laughs> uh, today, food is happening, and this morning we've got one of Food & Wine's best new chefs with us, Ana Castro. Her Mexican restaurant, Lengua Madre, in New Orleans, was named one of the best uh, oh. in America by both, oh not just the New York Times, but also Bon Appetit. Hola, Ana. Hola, Carson. Muy bien, gracias. Uh, great to have you. First of all, um, the name of the restaurant. Lengua Madre. What does that mean? It means mother tongue. Uh, I named it that because when people hear me speak, they always assume that I speak another language. And I always say, like, ella es Spanish. And I'm always like, it's my mother tongue. So that's why I named the restaurant Lengua Madre. Mm. So you bring the Mexican flavors to New Orleans. You have this incredible menu. We're going to start with shrimp. This is on. This, is this on the, the tasting menu? Every now and then. Yeah. Every now and then. Once, once, All right, walk us through the shrimp prep. So you have your boiling water and yep. you have your shrimp. Um, Pretty much any shrimp that is available to you. If you have other uh, alternatives, that's fine. You're just going to jump it all in. Yep. Mm. Give it a good stir. Mm -hmm. This is just so it cooks evenly. All good. And you're going to leave it here for about, like, I don't know, let's say three minutes or so. Is there, like, a, an easy way to just cook shrimp to where people at home can just know when it's done? Yes. Is there, like, a hack or a trick? or? Yes, 100%. So you grab one, obviously, like, with, like, a spoon or something. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna snap it in half. Yeah. And when you see like the the meat is like not translucent anymore, but opaque. Yeah. That's why it's so when it's like white and not exactly. And you're gonna clear. put okay. it in ice. Okay. Like to stop, stop the, cooking the cooking process. process. Exactly. And from there, all you're gonna do is you're gonna start peeling your shrimp. Okay. So you cook them uh, with the peels on. Yeah. Blanch uh, them and then. Mm -hmm. Could you bla be lazy, Anna, and buy peeled shrimp? You can do whatever you okay. want. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. You know, all right, I'll peel these. You move on to the... That is the correct mm -hmm. answer. Yeah, you, you peel this. <laughs> yeah. You can buy anything that is, like, honestly, anything that is available to you. Mm -hmm. I live in New Orleans, which I love living there, mm -hmm. because there's such nice seafood. Mm. Oh, there really is. Nice everything. How was the nice Mexican everything. food in New Orleans when you got there? What, did you see a need for it? Like, good, authentic Mexican food? There's, like, well, you know, there's really good Mexican food and all kinds of food, like, in New Orleans. Because people in New Orleans really, like, I think, like, they f they know how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, like, yeah. anything. Mm. Uh, we're going to move on to our um, yep. garnish for it. So, oh. tomatoes, you're just going to dice these guys up. And uh, from there... So, is this just, like, chilled... Shrimp salad sort of vibe? Is that so basically what's happening? It's like a shrimp How cocktail. How was it, guys? You have yeah, a, a it's shrimp insane. cocktail. It's Thank you. so good. So Thank good. you. Mm. All right. Classic American dish, right? Shrimp cocktail. Yeah. But we're just going to make it a little like a little lighter. So this style right. of shrimp onions, cocktail. Onions, some yep. cilantro. Onions, some, cilantro. Some green something. Serranos. Uh, if you want it a little spicier, you can leave the seeds on. If you mm -hmm. want have jalapenos, really. You know, you can just kind of do your thing with it. That's so good. Wow, that. so orange fresh. juice. Mm. Oh, orange juice. I like mm -hmm. that. That's a little yeah. unexpected. Lime juice. Mm-hmm. And hot sauce. Any kind oh, yeah. of hot sauce that you like. Yeah. Mm. Next up, we're going to add ketchup. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's, interesting. Uh -huh. We that's see what, you. Kind of like the orange juice is going to balance that sweetness out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then some vegetable juice. Mm-hmm. It's... So it's gonna be way lighter than like an, a traditional American shrimp cocktail. You could put vodka in here and have a Bloody Mary almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not a bad idea. So after that, we're yep. gonna add our shrimp. Add the shrimps. Mm -hmm. The shrimps are delicious because you blanch them, stop the cooking. They got a nice little bite to them, like a little crisp. Yes. Mm -hmm. Delicious. All right, let's move on with salt. to the uh, to the next dish. Yes. Which is what? Sweet potato. Okay. Are you gonna say it or am I gonna say it? Oh, it's the sauce. The sauce is crazy. You say it. <laughs> Sweet potatoes and cacahuatadas. You hear this, that? is what what? <laughs> this is my grandma's when recipe. When you point at the menu when you order it. You're yeah, like, that, that. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, it means in peanuts, right? So this yep. sauce my grandmother used to make it. And she used to make it with like chicken uh, usually. So this is a really important dish to me because it just reminds me of home. Yep. Mm. So we're going to, but I made it my own, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make it, um, we're going to make a seed crunch. Which Wait, is gonna be there was chicken in this when you were eating it? The way your grandma made it? Was there a protein in it? Chicken, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. But you don't make it with the chicken? Nah. Uh -huh. How come? Because there's beautiful sweet potatoes in the South. Okay, mm -hmm. so They're it's like, vegan, right? Or what does that mean? Yeah, it is vegan, but it's by coincidence, not by design. Got it. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to do our seed mix. It's going to be toasted seeds, um, mm -hmm. 
sesame seeds, almonds, and peanuts that are going to be chopped. So do you toast all those seeds together, or do you like toasting them separately? Separately, because they mm -hmm. toast at different rates. They're different sizes. That is the um, only good question I have left. That is a good one. <laughs> Citric acid, mm -hmm. salt, and turmeric. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're just going to like mix this up. Yeah. Well, this looks, this well. looks very hearty. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Yeah, keep going. Um, we're going to have oil. our, for the sauce round, we're okay. going to have our oil. It's hot. And this chile. And cacahuatada. Mm. <laughs> and cacahuatada. Mm -hmm. This chile has been previously toasted in it. Mm -hmm. It's anchos, guajillos, and arbol. Wow. Yum. Yum. -y. All right, you got some onions going in. Onions going in. Some garlic. Garlic. Some salt. Salt thrown in. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> salt. I have a thing with salt. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then the nut mixture goes in now or not yeah, yet? Yeah, you can put it in now. Okay. Wow. wow. This would be a good fall dish. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's a whole It like, was actually a full dish. Oh, okay. Okay, tomato. Tomatoes. Yeah. And then you're just going to cook that down for like 30 minutes or so. If it starts drying out, mm -hmm. you can add a little bit of water so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan. Mm -hmm. This feels like a protein substitute because it's got so much. Very hearty. It's yeah. hearty, yeah. Yeah. And then from this guy, yep. uh -huh. you're going to have your sweet potatoes, just roast them in the oven whole. That's a pretty potato right really pretty. there. Look at that. A little scoring. Mm -hmm. A little scoring. Get and then some from sauce here. to get down deep. Mm. Yep. Yep, there it is. I and love that sauce. Oh. And cacahutaro. <laughs> then you just sprinkle it. Wow. Yeah. yeah with the nut seed mixture. Uh, these are really it's delicious. delicious. Thank How you. Good you is could this put too? that sauce on anything, though. I, like, oh, yes. It's oh, my God. Crazy. We eat so it over tofu as yeah. well. Oh, Sometimes yum. it's really good. You could yum. be on a cost stretcher house tonight. You could whip all this up. Not a problem. 100%. Easy. The recipes, <laughs> check them out, today.com slash food. And we are back with the third and fourth mm. hours in a minute on a great work. Congratulations. Mm. Thank you. We'll see you in New Orleans. Great. We'll have to come down and visit you. Yes, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell everybody the restaurant again. Lengua Madre. Lengua Madre. Uh-huh. Yeah. First, quick check your local mm. news and weather. Mm. Enjoy. This morning on the third hour of today, a prescription for spring cleaning. We're going to go through the medicine cabinet, what to keep, what to toss, and the four items you should always have. Then later, our Today Climate Series is taking you underground and even deeper underwater. See the creative way one community is growing fresh food in harsh conditions. You can see the long greenhouse in the snow. And find out why scientists believe the answers to solving the climate crisis could be beneath the sea. And a special shop all day with gear, games, and bright ideas to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Today, Thursday, April 20th, 2023. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. I'm Al, along with Craig, Chanel, Dylan. We're having a great day. It's Friday Eve. Friday Eve. Good Friday. Friday. Yeah. 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 This one yeah. is a very special. It's going to be a great Friday. Friday Eve because we are just one day away from heading to Sonoma County, Yay. California. Yes. Uh, and the weather yes. looks great. Like we it, turned oh, it around. It? That's yes. right. It's going to be a little nippy in, in the, the morning, morning. But it's going to be okay. Yeah, I can handle that. We are hosting a huge first ever Start Today event. We're going to see the sights and get a taste of Sonoma County. We're going to bring some special guests along. Uh, We're not going to do that, though, what we just saw there. Are I would love what? to do that. Uh, that yoga pose, you saw the... Oh, no. I was looking at the girl sitting in a tree staring at the sunset. 
said. That's what I want to do. I think it's called forest bathing. Is that a thing? Well, we're going to do something like that, but something that's more indigenous to the area. I love that. So now that we're only a day away, how are you feeling? It's an event sponsored by Sonoma County Tourism. So here's the question. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm great. I'm looking, I'm looking forward. I love a field trip. It's like being back in school. Yes, here, I agree. And you spent like, and you know. And we have so much fun when we travel. Because we don't get to, because look, we, we don't get a lot of time to yeah. hang out. Yes. Off the broadcast because you, you, you guys got small kids. We've all yeah. we're bringing our spouses along. We are. So fun. Not I'm, my kids. Though. Well, you're not. No, I'm not. No. Well, De- <laughs> Deborah, Deborah didn't want to be with you guys. You no, no, I'm only six. kidding. She's got something to do. That's that fine. She's... You can be the seventh wheel. That's so right. Two, yes. four, six, seven. Yeah. That's okay. it. That's me. <laughs> How are you guys feeling? Are you excited? I'm feeling great. What are you I most can't looking wait. forward to? I am most looking forward to going to the airport without children. It's a small. I don't care where that flight takes me. I don't. I just don't have to carry all their things. There you go. That's a good point. Yes. What are you most looking forward to? Uh, I am most looking forward to, what is it called? Forest bathing. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. You got to watch where you get the pine needles. Okay. uh, (laughs) Since we're about to be on the road, we wanted to play a quick game of Would You Rather. Okay. Okay. So, spontaneous adventure or a trip with an itinerary? Itinerary. Spontaneous. Spontaneous as long as it's warm. Itinerary. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so which one about you? In other words, I just sit there. You just want to I, I, I just beg. There. Would you do yeah. spontaneous or would I, you do I itinerary? might do spontaneous. It depends I, yeah. on where. But we're not I don't allowed to think about all the things I have to do. If it comes, it like falls into my lap, sure, uh-huh. let's go boom. do that. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you get an assignment and all of a sudden, boom. Yes. Okay, window or aisle? Aisle. aisle. I like the window. I used to like the window, but now I feel, I don't know. Claustrophobic? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But okay. What about when you have to get, get, go, get up and go to the bathroom? Yeah. I wait until that person next to me somebody? goes to the bathroom. She waits until they fall asleep. And, just and then yeah. you just climb over them? Okay. No, I don't wait until I fall asleep. That's I wait until they go to the bathroom. And then I get up and I'm like, you know, that's And weird. you know what I don't like is what? because I'm petite, they just assume that they don't have to move. Like that's that I have true. to like step yeah. over you. Yeah. I don't like someone else's sleep schedule to dare dictate my, my urination schedule. <laughs> Does that, that make sense? sense. Yeah. Like, okay. If you're on the aisle, you've got total freedom. That's true. Yes, That's you true. do. Okay. What's the next question? Now, this one, this one, I know you two have done. Uh, yeah. Solo trip or travel with in-laws? Well, I think That's it's glamping oh. or a five-star hotel. Yeah, no, glamping. glamping or a five-star hotel. I have done the glamping. I love the glamping. Hmm. Five-star hotel. Five-star. Five-star. Like, it's not even I mean, I take a four-star with glamping. <laughs> have you been glamping? <laughs> have you been glamping? Wait, I... the crew just said, when he said he'd take a four-star, shocking. You four stars? We don't believe it. Okay. We don't glamping? believe it. I, I, I like glamping. Glam. I've never glamped. I'm telling Stop you. Stop your laughing, Bob. Literally the whole crew. What does that feel like for the whole crew to erupt in laughter? I feel because they don't believe. the crew knows me well. <laughs> Although, one time you and I did that RV. Oh, you hear about this? We did, no. we did this RV oh, trip. That's so we're supposed to spend the night in the RV. A nice RV. Yes. Now, we had all, they had also booked this gorgeous, gorgeous Five-star inn. hotel? Yeah. Okay. okay. This, yes. was, this was in, uh, I believe it was Maine. It was, I forget what part, but yes, it was in Maine. So it was in yeah. Maine, right on the coast. Anyway, RV's bathroom didn't work. All of a sudden, Craig says, I'm spending the night. I said, see ya. <laughs> so... So I, I'm out there by myself, like at the fire. Like waiting for sun's like, going. You brought Al a drink. <laughs> the sun's Al, going, buddy. You say it jokingly. The sun's going down. It's a half mile walk to the bathroom. I'm like, huh? I, where's Rupert? Where's I send him where's a picture. Of, I send him a picture of a nice G and T. He's at the at freaking the bar. bar. And there's no transportation. I'm stuck out there in the middle of the night by myself. You said you wanted to stay in the, the woods. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Ever since then, five hotels. Uh, five oh, although, hotels. you can go glamping out on uh, Governor's, on Governor's Island. Island. I think we yeah. should do yeah. it I'm in telling New York. You, it is a terrific experience. We should try it. Yeah, okay. the kids, we did it in Montana. It was big. Okay. I love that. I know. All right. Okay, speaking of travel, one backpacker wrote a list of a few things that you don't need to pack on a trip for the website Globo Treks. So okay. Here are a few. Okay. Uh, uh, jewelry and valuable. Leave it at home. Yeah, I mean, hmm. Maybe you wear them once or twice, but you run the you risk of losing it. You can lose yeah. it. Yeah. So that's like happen? you pack a lot of jewelry because you I know, always I match know. your jewelry I'm to my your mother's outfit. child. I do. I pack a lot of. You stuff. have a special bag for your jewelry. I do. <laughs> is it a jewelry bag? I do. Or is it a Ziploc? <laughs> Actually, oh, I did. But I, oh, but I get grief <laughs> for a four-star hotel. Has my name on it. You travel with the jewelry bag, but I get flat. No, but yesterday. She knows Janet Jack. Yeah, I was just. Yeah, that's true. Like, did Janet give you her jewelry bag? Is With that- monograms. 
has JJ okay. on it. it. Also say, don't pack too many uh, cotton clothes because they take up too much space no, and cotton. they take cotton. longer Most to dry. Cotton? That's silly. I don't know. Like, I don't know. That seems <laughs> that's very silly. specific. Because it don't. takes up more space in the suitcase. I can only take my spandex because it's small. <laughs> more than one book. They take up space, yeah. and if you're done with it, you That's can, true. maybe you can try to trade with another child. And do you know well, that who's doing that? I just did that with my mom on vacation. But that's your mother, though. I said, Mom, I just finished this book. But that's your mom. You made it seem like you're just treating books with strangers. Books. Actually, I've done that. Yeah. With someone on a plane? No, no, we were in a hotel. It wasn't no. a four-star hotel. <laughs> it Otherwise, it would have had its own library. No, but, <laughs> but I don't understand that. Like, you're just like, excuse me. Yeah, you no, I just, I just, I just I literally. You I know just, what was weird, though? When he did it, it was one of his own books. <laughs> yes. He was like, I believe it. That's it. So no, I just finished, second I finished the book. <laughs> And I said, would you like this? Don't and make me said, turn around this car. <laughs> Al Roker. Al was make trying to tell a story. This book around. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Here's an interesting one. An article on CNN.com says gardening is on the rise. This I, I don't buy. It can even replace a gym work. That's not true. Now, if you're doing I, no, outdoor gardening. Yes, where you're lugging like, dirt. Yes. From the front of your house, say, to the back of your house right. alone, mm -hmm. it's a good workout. Now that's a workout, yes. like carrying those bags of soil and stuff well, like yeah. that. Like when Nick okay. and I, when Nick and I were doing our backyard uh, garden, mm -hmm. that was work. That's true. I'm thinking about, you know, you got day some plants day. upstairs. Yeah. yeah. You know, you gotta okay. get the heart rate up. That's right. But this is what they say. That's right. According to research, working in your garden is a source of moderate to vigorous physical activity in younger adults. For old people... <laughs> <laughs> it can provide low to moderate physical activity. I love that. I and in fact, it's one of the uh, physical activities with the lowest injury rate. I can believe that. And that's pretty good. One of the best things we've done over the last few years is start a family garden in the backyard. I really? Yeah, I think kids. it's so... We grew these little strawberries. They were so small, but yeah. they were like... But the kids take so such sweet. pride in it. Yes. Exactly. And they, they, they love they it. They eat something that they... So gardens work like you bury yeah, I'm like, seeds in the ground. No, my mom used to when we were growing up. But you, oh, you I'm start with seeds? So with some of them, huh. some of them we do. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, but it's, well, you start with those starter plants. They well, love it. And they, they love to show it off start when people a come over. <laughs> <laughs> don't say ridiculous <laughs> things. Like, don't look at me and say something that you know doesn't you, mean. You, know, you could dance in the garden. Like, don't do that. Like, you're just wasting, you might, you're just wasting verbiage. I thought you might want to start a garden in 2023. But it doesn't rhyme. 2023? <laughs> Gardening for me in 2023. Oh, that's good. That's good. Look okay. at my seeds. There you go. Well, <laughs> this was good. No, we this like was it. great. All right, coming up next on today's checklist, spring cleaning for the medicine cap. Uh, what you should always have on hand and when to toss those old medications out. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to celebrate Earth Month, show you how one community found the solution for a food crisis, and the answer was literally right beneath their feet. Third hour today, I'll be right back. <laughs> With today's checklist and in the spirit of spring cleaning, we are going to clean out our medicine cabinet, folks. And to do that, we brought in the best. NBC medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. She's going to tell us what we absolutely should have and what to do with all those old bottles that have been there for years. Dr. Natalie, good to see you. Nice to see this you. This is something that I don't think a lot of folks think about. But let's just start with how often should we even be doing it? How often should we go into that medicine cabinet and start chucking stuff? To do our spring cleaning? Yeah. Well, the FDA says that we should do it twice a year. Hmm. So right before spring and summer, and then again in the fall and winter. I would think of it as like 
the end of your school year for your kids and the beginning of your school year for your kids. So really kind of twice a year, Craig. Okay, Mr. Right. Hooker's standing All right, well, let's so, get started. So, so Dr. Nat, what do, yeah. where do we start? Even before we, we look at medicines, yes. what are some of the things we need to start checking? To start getting rid of? We, we have our hand, oh, we do have our handy dandy little waste basket here. Uh, yes, okay. we do. Toothbrushes, <laughs> toothbrushes okay. every three months. Ooh, three months. Okay. Right now. That's there right. you go. Contact cases yes. every three months. Right. Oh. Easy enough to remember. Razors after every five to seven uses. Oh, okay. good. But not the ones that have out. a reusable head on it, right? Well, I think you have to replace yeah, the, the yeah, razor right, each replace time. That. It's all, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. probably if that wasn't plastic. And then a loofah oh. once a month. That's got to oh, like be a, a breeding ground. It is a breeding Oops. ground. Mm -hmm. All of these are. So now we're getting into medications. Okay, what about expiration dates? Expiration dates, that's what everybody wants to know. It depends on what the medicine is for. Think about it this way. Anything that's prescription, anything Anything that's liquid or anything that is life-saving, think like EpiPens or mm -hmm. nitroglycerin, right. get rid of it by the expiration date. Okay. But let's say you have a splitting headache. I found some Advil. Have, right. And you got some Advil, you have some acetaminophen, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's a little bit expired. Is that dangerous? No, it's not dangerous if it's past its expiration date. It just not might not work as well. So its efficacy the, might be reduced. Exactly. And the reason that I say watch out with prescription drugs is let's say that you'd use an antibiotic that is past its expiration date. Or let's say you're on a blood thinner and it's past its expiration date. We don't want that because we want that to be at its full, full potency. Mm -hmm. So in terms of getting rid of medication, this is really important. Yep. The safest and the, the recommendation is to do something called a, dr a drug take back. That means you, you can go to the DEA website, you plug mm -hmm. in your zip code and you find places, ask your pharmacy, where can mm -hmm. you safely dispose of your medicine? Mm -hmm. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the FDA website right. and you're gonna go, they have some they called a flush list because believe it or not you can actually flush and they want you to flush certain medications mm -hmm. down the toilet like opioids because okay. we really don't want people who shouldn't get their hands on them to get their hands right. on them but let's say you've got this this is a diabetes medication mm -hmm. it's expired you're not taking it anymore you're going to stick it in mm -hmm. a baggie of something unappealing right used coffee grounds oh. kitty litter dog ah, litter okay. you're going to seal it you are going to throw Boom. it away. That's a good and idea. Last but not least, I want to be very clear. Before you dispose of this, let's say in a recycler, you are going to use your Sharpie and get rid of your address. contact information. Oh, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Okay. So are we talking about now things you should have? Yes. Oh, things that we should have are oh. still, I think some of them are in the yes. cabinet. So let's think of it this way. Pepsid? I always do, yes, I like Pepsid. antacids. This mm -hmm. is the easy way to think about it. Okay. The four A's. We have acetaminophen and aspirin. You want to hold that up for us? Excellent. Okay. We have it, it, this is a group effort. I love I know, it. There's so no we have too. antacids, Tums, right? Okay. Like your Pepsid and your Tums. Mm -hmm. We have aspirin. We have an antihistamine in there, probably some. You know what? Allergy, I, one allergy time, stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. I that? was caught. Allergy, allergy stuff. Allergy, yep. caught. allergy stuff. I was yep. caught without a working thermometer once. Yes. Oh, that's and that worse. is a pain. And yes. that's number five. Boom. It doesn't start with an A, but we also want to have you a working thermometer. Like the ones where you know whether it's on the forehead or you know there's some fancier ones. There are. So the American Academy of Pediatrics, they will recommend for kids either using like a rectal or under the arm mm. or the ear. Okay. Um, but definitely the ones that go into the ear are very, very accurate. Okay. okay. And okay. what should we be stocking up on? Make sure we have. So these are ancillary things. I always want everybody to have SPF, an mm -hmm. SPF of 30 or more. Repl re reapply every two hours. Do you have to get swimming. rid of it if you, it's been a year old, like it's from last summer? So that's the same thing. It, you know, again, it's not dangerous to do that necessarily, but it may not work. be as strong. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then eardrops to prevent oh. swimmers here. I don't know if you have, have oh, your guys oh, have ever. That. My kids both have had swimmers. Yep. It can ruin a vacation oh, like can. that. So yes. this contains some alcohol. It dries out the ear. Okay. Um, we also want to have know. some hydrocortisone mm. for itchies and insect bites right. and things like that. Always good to have on hand. Okay. And, and tweezers. tweezers. Yeah. And tweezers. Yes. I can't see with my own two eyes. <laughs> Why do we love tweezers? Splinters. Tick, tick, splinters. Yeah. And ticks. Yeah. I'm thinking oh, about our spring break. We needed all of these things. Exactly. Now you're all set for vacation, everybody. We're all set for Sonoma. We love it. All right. Well, coming up next on today's climate, we're going to dig into just what's a genius idea. See how one community literally went underground and found a creative new way to grow fresh food all year round. Then later, it's an outdoor edition of Shop All Day. What is this? Cornhole, baby. Did you get it? Cornhole. Uh, from essentials to fun games, everything you need to get outside Good, and stay there. Whoa. Hey. That was a very it's aggressive like throw. Price. I like it. I know. Third hour oh. today. Right back. You got like most of them.
This morning and today, Climate, we're going to shine a light on an indigenous reservation in South Dakota that was facing a food crisis. Well, they came up with a solution that's a creative way to grow fresh food year-round, even in the harshest of conditions, by harnessing the power hmm. of the earth. Green things growing is pretty amazing considering what you've seen outside. Rayson Rains lives on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. You can see the long greenhouse in the snow. The area deemed a food desert, meaning healthy, affordable options aren't always nearby. Grocery stores scarce and poor health conditions prevalent. And when the pandemic hit, community leaders were concerned produce would become even harder to come by. So we started looking at ideas. How can we accomplish feeding ourselves if the, if the roads are shut down? So the district pooled together their funds to build a greenhouse on the reservation. It's a multi-family level of food production so that we could grow as much food as possible in a year-round basis. It took three years for the Wakpomni Lake Community Greenhouse to become fully functional, built four feet underground. Here is the actual geothermal tubes that are 10 feet deep to grab the Earth's ambient air temperature. It's actually 52 degrees, so during the winter time, that's nice and hot for our cold weather temperature crops. And then during the summertime, that's nice and cool for our hot weather temperature crops. Allowing Rayson and his team to provide consistent free produce to more than 40 families in the area. It's a gift from ourselves to ourselves. But he's not the only Pine Ridge resident working to bring food to the Lakota people. This is Natalie Hand. She works with Conscious Alliance, a local nonprofit and food pantry that gives free supplies to those in need. For the most part, it's, you know, your standard processed canned goods, which is fine for emergency food relief, but for the long term, you know, we want people to eat healthier. Healthy eating means figuring out how to grow crops on the reservation's 2.1 million acres, land that is rocky, cold, where harsh winds are a threat to crops and above ground greenhouses. That's just an, an indicator of how fierce the wind is out here on the plains. Having visited an underground greenhouse like Rayson's, Natalie realized the answer was right beneath her feet. When it was 20 below zero that winter, it was 52 degrees down in their greenhouse and they were growing broccoli. Inspired, she decided to build her own. We have a clear polymer roof. We're plotting out what vegetables, what fruits we can grow down there. And you know, this first year will be kind of a, a test run for us. It's exciting. After securing a grant, Natalie aims to complete the project by next month, hoping this access will help residents stave off chronic illnesses like diabetes, which affects as many as 16% of American Indian adults. Dialysis is just like a normal thing here, and we're trying to, to change the tide. And a lot of people want to eat healthier, they just don't have access to healthy, you know, reasonably priced produce. For Natalie, the greenhouses represent the future of the Lakota community. When we broke ground, we wanted to give it a name that, that traditional speakers would understand and interpret. Oyate Ta Owoju is the people's garden. So that's what this greenhouse is, is going to be called. That's amazing. Natalie's greenhouse should be completed next month. In all, that's going to make eight underground greenhouses that are either built or being built on the reservation. Oh. And this summer, Rayson and his team are opening up a farmer's market, which they hope will help the community generate some revenue from the extra harvest. And you can now learn more. Need help making a difference? Hey Siri, how can I reduce my carbon footprint? All right, when we come back, it is a shop all day in the great outdoors. Look at this, everything you need to know to enjoy nature, including the lights with 50,000 glowing oh, reviews. This glowing. is pretty cool, you get it? You put that up in your backyard, and then later we are upcycling some old items to give them new life, like turning a teapot into a beautiful centerpiece. Mm. We'll be right back.
We are celebrating Earth Month this morning. Earth Month this morning, I like that. And we have a shop all day filled with everything you need to know to enjoy a great outdoor space in your backyard. So Shop Today's Mako and Lobu is here with us. By the way, just remember, you can scan that QR code to see all of her pics. You've got some good stuff this morning. Great. Thank you. I'm so excited. Yeah. Good morning. I love these indoor, outdoor blankets. You were just saying these anywhere. would be great for your kids. Yes. We're going to be spending a lot of time outdoors, and I really love these blankets. They're really large. Mm -hmm. They can fit up to four adults and the toddlers. The brand says that it is waterproof Ooh. and sand resistant, and the brand cute. also knows that it won't tear. Ooh. But think about this That's for cute. a baby. Isn't it cute? The yes. color is cute too. A baby play mat going out to so the concert cute. and yes. going out to the beach. But here's the best part. Once you're done with it, you fold it up and it folds up into this little cute tote. Oh, That's cute. Cute. Ooh. Ooh. I love that. Cute. Makes it easy. And at the beach, you can shake it yeah, off. Shake, shake it off. off. Well, it's sand resistant according to the brand. So and you're all great. good. Easy to store. It's yeah. easy. So I love a good game of cornhole. Are you good at it? Uh -huh. And this is yeah. easy to travel with. That's the whole point. It's lightweight and it's portable. There's no. Oh. It's supposed to go into the actual home. The, what a anger. the whole point is oh, that they're go. lightweight and that. portable. Look, they bring out people's personalities. It's uh, great fun oh. for adults and kids. So, of course, you get the two collapsible oh, that was boards. Look at Dylan just, uh, mm -hmm, I see him. Be a little sister. Got it. You get the One two more. collapsible boards and you get the eight bean bags. But again, that it's portable. It has a bag so you can take it with you on the go. This is just oh, fun for cute. outdoors, right? Bar How much is this tailgating. one? This one is check that price on the screen. What is that? Make sure that you that's guys, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. We, okay. love, we all love these patio lights. Yeah. Outdoor patios. Well, listen, summer days stretch into summer nights. Mm. So you got to have those outdoor patio lights. You get a love set it. of 25 plus two bulbs. If you do have the space and you want that wow impact, you can connect them together. Oh. Now, according to the brand. These are waterproof, so if you get a little wind and a little rain, you're fine. Oh. But think about these right now in your front porch, mm -hmm. in your backyard. It gives, it gives it a vibe. Yeah. It gives it a little zhuzh. It, it does. Really, like, if you're having a gathering, it really it's just really elevates nice. it Anytime together. I walk by a restaurant and see those lights, I'm like, that's where Ooh, I want to go there. Yeah, yeah. get yeah. that restaurant <laughs> feel right in I love the comfort it. of your own I love home. It. So these are great. Don't miss out on these as well. Let's move to fashion. Uh huh. Here. Okay. So on the mannequins, we actually have a set of two, but you guys get this. You actually get a set of three. Oh, wow. I am obsessed with these. These are great for just daily life, but think about like jogging, playing basketball, mm -hmm. right? According to the brand, they're also moisture wicking, which means that even if you sweat, yeah. they will retain that moisture, but they're really comfortable. Solid. They come in sizes extra small all the way up to 3X, but I feel like the three of y'all could rock it. I mean, Chanel, you know, I love it. Too. Why not? I'll take it with me. <laughs> These, the with moisture wicking. These are for men, but oh. I definitely think that you can rock okay. them. I think yeah, they can be unisex for a set of three. T-shirt and shorts. A T-shirt we'll and take shorts. It. Dylan and I'll take these. Okay, well, we got some for the ladies. The color is so great. That's one of the things I like about them. They come in these fun colorways. There's a pink and there's a green, but the dark gray and the light gray is really cute. Get this, y'all. <laughs> it is a set of five. <laughs> really? Five? Right, are you thinking about these for your wife? So how are you? What are you doing? <laughs> it's a set of five. Take so you get right the sports right. right. you, you get under the shorts. You get the shorts. Oh, that's oh right. shorts with liners. Yes. And that's you cute. get a hoodie as well. Again, really, really mm. comfortable. That's cute. I don't know about you, but I feel more motivated to work out when my outfit looks cute, right? Totally Absolutely. agree. Uh -huh. yes. cute, All right. cute. Okay. This so, is great, especially if you're like boating or kayaking. Kayaking or, covering or if your kid can. drops yep. your phone in the pool. This is great. So this is how you protect your devices on your phone. So it's super easy. You put it in there. Now, according to the brand, you can still call. You can text. You can mm -hmm. actually still take pictures. Just slide it in there. Wait five minutes. Make sure that it's nice and, and, and firm and, and locked in and yep. tight. So you can do all those things underwater. But get this. Once you put it in water, <laughs> it sort of floats up to the yeah, top. Yeah, so it's got its own little life preserver. Yeah, so that's grab cute. this now before Durable. you plan your beach vacations before you're around the pool. Nice this is fantastic. Lanyard. That's great. Yep, Good nice little lanyard. lanyard. I love that. I love that. Is that this all is great. That's it. That was That's it. Let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's play some more cornhole. Thank you so much. Well, all right, these are good. Up. Did you like them? Yes. I'm glad. We are going out on to them. go green and get crafty, fun Earth Ooh. Day projects. Ooh. You can do at home, like a creative way to oh, make oh, use of old oh. wine corks. Hole in the middle. Then later, see how scientists are exploring the depths of the ocean to find answers to some of our biggest challenges using one state-of-the-art new vessel. We'll be right back. You put it in the wood. It's got to go in the middle hole. I'm not bringing this game back. I'm not bringing it back. It's a lot of problems. You're my good. I'm so glad.
more of our early celebration of Earth Day. And this morning, we are showing you some creative, eco-friendly crafts. Lindsay Pierce is the owner of the craft studio right here in New York City. And she is helping us upcycle some items we already have at home to give them new life. Lindsay, good yeah. morning. Hi, thanks for having Hi, me. Lindsay. I'm so excited to be we here. We walked over and we're uh, like immediately yes. commenting yes. on this great use to upcycle corks. Right? So. I mean, I love a bottle of wine, and we all have those corks <laughs> laying around. Um, and this is such a fun idea. Like, this is a living wall. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we've taken, put magnetic tape on them, and they're such a cute party favor. You can display it, and then everyone can take one home. And it's so easy. You soak your corks in water okay. to make them soft. And then I use a little screwdriver, scoop them on out. My husband was like, can I use a drill and just speed this along? <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, but anyway, it's so easy. And then you take a little soil, you put it in, and then you pop and your succulent. succulent on top. And they don't need a lot of care. Just spritz them with water every couple That's days. Craig is a I big love, fan of a, of a you have a I living wall. Right? Does like the living and then, water. and then over and here, succulents too. I love a succulent. Yeah, right? They're so easy to care for. And then look, I have all of your names, and you can oh, do it without the magnet. Cute, and it then makes it's a nice cute place on a place setting. setting. Right? That's cute. So you've, easy and fun. You've also upcycled a teapot. Yes. This yes. is creative. Okay, so you can thrift for these, or I have one that my grandma got me, and I'm like, what am I going to do with it? Sorry, grandma. But now it's back to life again. Succulents so easy. Easy. Mm -hmm. I do not have a green thumb as I was putting these together. I was so proud. But succulents, <laughs> you put them in, you just mist them every I now like and then. You even mm -hmm. use the lid here. And the that's spout, so cute. right? And that's just oh, an old oh, tray that. from a thrift shop. And you've got a beautiful creative, and I love really the mist. And everybody will talk mm -hmm. about it. Yep. And you can, on a smaller scale, do a little teacup even. That's oh, all nice. that yeah, really Look at what you cute. have around and use everything you got. Speaking yeah, of using yeah. everything you got, yes. uh, we, we always open up our tin cans. Yes. Throw away the top. You found a way to recycle. How cute are these? So I'm trying to cook with herbs and teach my kids about that. Mm -hmm. So we planted our own little herb garden inside. I, and this, I love that you could do this inside in, a, in an apartment. You don't have access to green space. And then I took a nail file, like the metal ones, like okay. you could get from the, the beauty supply store. And then I painted them and I stamped the names of the herbs and they're just, mm -hmm. they look so That's cute, cute. That's right? Cute. So you know what you, you know. have. You can take a little rosemary, add it to your dinner. You can even do that in an outdoor garden. Yes, absolutely. Right in Indoor, oh, outdoor, That's it's really a cute, cute little marker, right? All right, so now we're going to talk about how to take a, a lamp and yeah. zhuzh it up a little bit. Or maybe just, you're tired of the same old lamp. I was just about to lamp. throw out a lamp shake. So right? Really? Uh -huh. I, I, don't I mean, it. my son is three, and he literally, like, they're covered with fingerprints. <laughs> they have dents in them. He wrestles them. So I have all these little scrapbooking papers around, or you can get mm -hmm. them. You can use wrapping paper, tissue paper. And all you do is you rip them, and then you get some double-sided tape, and you can cover your lampshade that may be oh. stained. Wait, or, I thought you were going to, like, was it decoupage? Like, I thought yes. you were going to use some you, kind of glue or something, can, no? What would you just say decoupage? Decoupage. That's a very, very impressive. crafting word. Well, I'm very impressive. That Who is amazing. Are you? you move over, craft guru. Chanel's got you covered. Um, but exactly. And then at the end, when you're wow. done, if you want to give it a nice finish, look, you know what's up. I have decoupage. Decoupage. Glue. There you go. I used, to be, I used to be a crafter. You still are. And really? I, before I had children. You, you still are. You know the word you decoupage. Were really I did. I used to sell stuff. What do you do with that? <laughs> Why are you laughing? You could have I a second, did. second career as a craft you. guru. I'm impressed. Okay, I love this. This is a desk organizer or a oh, beauty supply yeah. organizer, again, with the cans. That's cute. So the tops that you took off, yes. mm -hmm. save these cans. Yep, the cans. and here's my little nail file. Look, you just smooth the edges out. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to use Does that really work? work? Does, yeah. it, does it? Does yeah. it, like, nails on a chalkboard? <laughs> it does work. I okay. was so, I was re not ready for sandpaper, but this is, it's like, like a good sanding. beginner, you know. And then I just use hot glue, all different cans. This is a paper towel roll. Oh, you can add oh, lace or ribbons. We got a little beauty supply one. We got Wait, a that's school supply cute. one. Really I think they're cute. cool, wow. and I spray painted them, and mm -hmm. I was making them at my studio, and a few parents were like, I'm going to do this tonight. Honestly, like, yeah, I thought, is... I didn't even think about that, that that's a, a paper, paper towel, towel. towel. This that's is really a plastic cute. jar, and I literally found these random pieces of wood that it was like in our you basement. You can use some of these to hold your decoupage glue. Exactly. <laughs> your, for your <laughs> Chanel craft, craft corner. Craft, I yes. love it. Okay, I'm obsessed with this. I got this as a gift about oh. 10 years ago. My crafty friend made it, and when I was thinking about Earth Day, so we, I don't know about you guys, do you have frames that the glass is broken? Yeah, I have one of these, too. What do you do in the frame? So all you do is, so you take the glass out for your over earrings. here, yep, and so you take the wire, and you start at one end, don't poke yourself, and okay. you wrap it around the thumbtacks that you just press into the back of the frame, and then look, it's like a little oh, earring. Really oh, or yeah. this one, I just hot glued laced the end, and then you pop the backing back in the frame, and then you can Look set it on your nightstand. Is that cute? The one I have so is mesh, oh, and then oh, I yeah. just take the earrings and right? put them in the mesh. I know. So, oh, oh, you painted the inside. Too. Yep, painted the That's back, nice. and then it's great. Yeah, you and Del could use that. Seriously, for, for, for your 
very, there you go. There so we only have the one pair. So now. <laughs> Lindsay, thank you so much for all your single idea. earrings. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So fun. That's really cute. And really thank look you. around. There's so many things we have already laying around that you can not waste. Very We're not cool. waste, not yeah. buy, not not clutter. It's good. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Lindsay. Thanks waste for having not, me. Want not. Exactly. Waste not, exactly. Want not. Coming up, folks, a groundbreaking ocean mission. And it's really just the beginning. What scientists are searching for deep underwater when the third hour of today comes back right after this. taking our Today Climate series into the deep. Our planet's oceans could hold the key to slowing climate change and offer clues about the origins of life here on Earth. Now researchers have a new state-of-the-art vessel to help explore this underwater frontier. It's called the FACOR-2. Scientists can use it at no cost thanks to the nonprofit Schmidt Ocean Institute funded by philanthropist Wendy Schmidt and her husband Eric former CEO of Google. Wendy Schmidt joins us this morning. So good to have good you. Morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Yeah. What a great idea. What a great mission. For folks who are not familiar, though, tell us about the, the, the Schmidt Ocean Institute and its mission. We saw a problem back in 2009 that the oceans are under attack hmm. and scientists don't have access to ships often enough to go and do the research they want to do. Hmm. So we decided to create that platform and to invite science parties from all over the world to use our ship wow. and to share their information in real time, transparently with the community and with the public. So okay. Wendy, why is that important to, to make sure the public gets to see all this information? Because most of life on Earth is in the ocean. We're searching for life. Mm -hmm. We're searching to map the bottom of the ocean. We have better maps of the back of the moon than we do of our own planet. Wow. Mm. We can't protect something when we talk about Earth Day mm -hmm. that we don't understand. So our mission is to bring the scientists of the world together to explain what's going on, to take our technology that's amazing now. You can be an explorer, Al. You can go on one of our missions. I'm I'll coming. Anyone. I'm there. You can get on YouTube and go along with our robotic vessel, wow. Sebastian, to places no human eye has ever seen. Mm -hmm. That's so to interesting. places you could not go. So it just returned from its inaugural uh, expedition. I was just looking about at this out under the water, and it captured these stunning images, from what I understand, uh, these underwater vents. Can you connect the dots between what's happening down there to what we're what's happening here on the ground? Absolutely. It's all connected. Yeah. I wish I'd grown up knowing that. Mm. I discovered the ocean in midlife. But the fact is, the ocean, the atmosphere, and the pictures. land are completely connected in ways people really need to understand. Our scientists that visited on Falcor 2 uh, at the Mid-Atlantic Range went to look for hydrothermal vents. That's what you were describing. Okay. Mm -hmm. These things can rise up 200 feet tall, and they're with the magma of the Earth, its mm -hmm. crust, meets ocean water mm -hmm. and creates this chemical effect. The water's boiling. It's filled with sulfur. And guess what else? What? Life. Life. <laughs> How does it look at that? Teeming with life. Look at mm. that. You wouldn't expect life on Earth to look like that. No. Right. So this challenges all of us to think about what life on Earth really is mm. and what we need to protect because the ocean is the look source of all life. Right. It's so special to see that imagery. Um, so this weekend, you're going to receive the President's Award for Conservation from the Explorers Club. I thought it was interesting that you noted Maybe we shouldn't call it conservation. Maybe it should be restoration because mm. you can't conserve 
what it is right now. You really want to restore what the ocean should be. Yes, I mean, the oceans have been under attack my entire lifetime, mm -hmm. unfortunately, for all the reasons you know. You've done stories on plastic yep. pollution and overfishing and all of this stuff. And we, we need to change our relationship. We can't conserve something we're destroying. Mm. We need to think about restoring it mm. to its, its healthy state because health on land depends on health in the ocean. You speak about health and, and the ocean. And so we know so little right now. What are some of the things that we can, will we be able to glean from the ocean, from uh, different life sources, different uh, biofuels, different, different food sources? There are many resources in the ocean and they could be accessible to us, but until we understand through the kinds of expeditions we're doing at Schmidt Ocean Institute, we really should be careful. We could damage very uh -huh. vital systems in mm -hmm. the ocean in pursuing our industries. We did that in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to do a better job for the future. Wendy, for folks who are watching or listening right now, uh, who, who they're in the research field who might be interested in becoming a part of this, how do they go about doing that? We accept proposals of interest okay. that come to Schmidt Ocean Institute. Our boat will be in seven different ocean basins over the next seven years, wow. so people will know where we're going to be. We're going to go to places that have never been explored, wow. we never should, been mapped. We should point out this is quite the boat as well. This is quite the facility. Well, it's amazing. We refitted an old boat that was um, uh, working on oil platforms, mm. a very seaworthy vessel. But it took 18 months mm. during the pandemic, mm. amazingly, mm. that everything got done. And we were able to launch this march out of Spain. Wow. Can't wait so to see exciting. what's coming out of this. I know. I can't wait You're to see what is There's discovered. There's a look at the boat there. There's a look. <laughs> what a great concept. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks for Pleasure. the work you're doing. Mm. Thank you. Uh, third hour of today, right back after this. Can't wait. Tomorrow, third hour today, it's our big trip out <laughs> West California. Here we come. Ah, we're heading to Sonoma County, California for one epic trip. So be, be sure you tune in because we've got a huge start today event. We're going to have fun surprises, special guests, you name it. And of course, we're going to sample some wine as well, some local <laughs> fare. But of course. The show. Don't you want to watch us drink wine? <laughs> both sponsored by Sonoma County Tourism. Can't wait. It's going to be good. That's right. Hoda and Jenna are next. They're so jealous of us. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Hey, buddy, it's today. Hey, the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stuff with us now. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, that's 
You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs>
It's like the same thing. Yes. Don't jam it if down their throat. If you force yeah. everything at kids, they're not going to want it. Okay. okay. So in a new photo shoot, we're, we're talking about Rachel McAdams. Yeah, back to her. So she was. She did a new photo shoot with Bustle, and she. I love this. She said, do not touch up these photos. Yeah. I want to look like myself. Yeah. Um, and I, I think everybody's talking about how beautiful she is. Yes. And the other thing that is catching people's eyes are that she has armpit hair. Yeah. But some people are free and easy. Let it go. Let it flow. Let it be. And it's hard. You know what? Being free. It's like, this is me. Love me or criticize me. Yeah. Who too cares? Bad. But I think it's like doing your own thing. And I think being free of other people's judgment is real big. Yes. Especially when you're like her. She's in the public eye. And, has been for a and long time. And has been. It's like sometimes you try to please strangers by turning yourself into a pretzel, which or, seems yeah, so weird. Or you let somebody retouch you so you look like something that's not attainable for other yeah, women. Not even you. Yeah. Right. It's not you. Right. Because you've had 77 filters and retouch yeah. and this. And yeah. The armpit hair was there, which you probably didn't have time to shave, or maybe you didn't feel like shaving. I don't think she wanted to. Yeah. I don't know, but. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. What? Waxing and shaving is not that pleasant. No. <laughs> let it, let it be. I mean, I, I try. Try I to shave. do it. Shaving, I feel like it's I feel easy. The, in the thing tub. is about shaving my yeah. legs what? is that before I go to bed, I love the feeling of a silky leg on a sheet. I feel clean. And do you ready take a shower sleep. before bed? Not every about, night, but if I get if a little. If you do, then you'll shave before yes. you go to sleep. So Because yeah. I like that feeling of being really clean right before mm -hmm. sleep. How about you shower in the night and I morning? I shower in the morning and the night. I take a bath. I shower in the morning and the night, yeah. Did you just say the no, word bath? I, I didn't. I don't know why I said that. Because my kids get the bath. I get the shower. But I always take one before I go to sleep yes. now. And it, I like the feeling. I just, I put on lotion. I like the feeling. Even just to go to bed and feeling fresh and clean. Um, if you stuff. let some sort of thing go, some sort of self-care thing go, what would it be? Oh, eyebrows. I couldn't give a rip. Oh, yeah, me too. They're bad, too. No, Some... no, I don't think your eyebrows look yeah, bad. Yeah, they're not. They need, but I don't, I don't Here's the deal thing. with it. Big eyebrows, which I have, are in. So yeah. if you pluck them too much or... Then... No, but like the stuff in underneath, you know where you're... You don't have I, any. I didn't, because I probably, Mary often, who helps us oh, with yeah, makeup, is like, let's get... What about you? Anything? I let it all go. You don't care. All right. Um, okay, it's National Lookalike Day. Uh huh. So there's two actors that famously look alike, which I didn't know: <laughs> Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. They've got similarities. There's a rumor going around, and I think they're the ones starting it, that they might actually be half brothers. I think we should do a DNA test on this show, Maury. Maury. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be so cool to say, you are not brothers? <laughs> you, I cannot believe you resurrected Maury. All right. Maury so, is still on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would he explain that his dad and Matthew's mom met at one point, and, the mo and Matthew's mother in insinuated that they may have, quote, known, known each, each other. Kind of a lean in, known. known. So here's what Woody was saying when he was sharing some of the story with Stephen Colbert last night. Take a look. Uh, the year of his birth, oh, nine his, months before. Oh, his birth, right, right, she right. She had, you Matt. know, she, she was on a sabbatical from her relationship with... Uh, Dad Mac? His supposed <laughs> father. <laughs> Jim. Well, well, now, the his... thing is, like, we want to go and, you know, test, but for him, it's a much more big deal. I mean, he, he feels like he's losing a father, but I'm like, no, you're gaining a different father and a brother. <laughs> People have been looking at these photos and going, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll buy half-brother. Could be. Wait, what? Okay, I had no idea that this scandal was happening. This is bigger than Vanderpump rules. And, <laughs> and, by the way, Matthew was talking about it, too, and he was the one who was talking about what his mother was saying. They also have a project together, so some people think it's like a PR thing. But the Well, project, I don't care. It's working. Yeah, I agree. And I want them to come here yeah. and get tested. We have the best nurse over there. We do. We do. I like Teresa. Teresa! Teresa can come and do it. Teresa can do a quick Teresa little... Teresa will do... She could do that. We could do it, and it could all happen within the hour. We could test him in By the morning. By the end of the show, we we'll can know. reveal if they are truly siblings or not. <gasps> that will take our can show up a Imagine? <laughs> and we're already high. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so when you we talk about people who look alike, when okay. you get a, hey, you look a lot like, or are you so-and-so? Who do you get? I asked you first. Okay. Um, I, I In the earlier parts of my life, I got Mariel Hemingway. Okay, Mariel Hemingway. Okay, hold um, on, let's see. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys do have that. Yeah, cheese. yeah, yeah. Okay, what else? Who else? Anybody else? That was it? That's really okay. well, Sometimes <laughs> people are like, you know, you look like you look so, like yeah. Bush's daughter. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> what about you? I always get um, uh, Gail King. And I don't, it doesn't happen in the revert. See? Yeah. Okay. I mean, y'all, do, you don't, it's so interesting. But, I feel like if y'all were not in the same industry, I mean, you have the exact same job, just on different networks. I, get, I mean, I was in an airport in Chicago. I still remember it. And someone's like, hey, gal, gal. I was like, they call people gal. I thought that was weird. Like, some people are like, I yeah. thought it was like a, something like, they hey, did there. Yeah, girl. Hey, girl. And I go, I go, hi. And she goes, I love you. And I, but I like Oprah Moore, your bestie. I was like, oh, okay, gal. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. It's so interesting to me. It's weird. I think everyone's got a doppelganger. I mean, I think we want to see your doppelgangers, right? We'd love to see them. we like to see that? Yeah, because I think sometimes people are dead ringers yes. for one another. So if you have somebody who looks like you, you look like a celebrity, yeah. let us know. Go to our webpage or our uh, Connect yeah, page. Yeah, all you have to do is do that. Hit the Connect button. Do what they say. You know what's so interesting is I have a twin sister and we look nothing, very, nothing alike. Nothing. And my kids look more similar to each other. To each other than I think my twin and I look, which is so, in DNA is just a strange thing. It is. All roads lead back to that DNA test Swab we're going to do. and Nurse Teresa. I can't wait for it. All right, we got big news for the White Lotus fans, you guys. It was announced that Natasha Rothwell, who played the spa manager Belinda in the first season, is coming back for season three. Oh, she's so good. Just because I know you haven't watched much mm -hmm, of it, mm -hmm. she and Jennifer Coolidge have this kind of um, go, uh, what was the word we love to use? Um, what's wrong with Gaslighting? my mind? Yeah, they ga uh, Jennifer Coolidge gaslights her. Oh. And they have this weird sort of gaslighting relationship. Well, everyone, because it's so hot, everyone wants in. Everybody wants into this show. Yes. All the celebs want in. D evidently, Jennifer Aniston threw her name in there. Cheryl Lee Ralph mm -hmm. um, wants to join the cast. So we figured we would do... Hoda, Hoda and Jenna, Jenna casting call. Okay, so here's what we have. We've broken it down. First of all, we needed the eccentric, over-the-top hotel guest, the Jennifer Coolidge part. So we thought, who would be good for that? We have two options. Yes. Judith, Judith Light, Light and or Susan, Susan Lucci. Lucci. What do y'all think? Don't you think? There's Susan Lucci. She'd be great in that role. Judith Light. We think they'd be yeah. awesome. Okay. Okay, we need that hot, sexy yeah, couple. Yeah. Remember in the first yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, Who could that be? There was this <gasps> couple, and then the, when they came and visited couple. us, Megan. And, yes. All right. How about this? Go ahead. Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet. Now, you may say, listen, Kylie Jenner isn't an acted yet. Well... She hasn't, but what a better debut than White Lotus. I think she could do it. And Did I you think know that, that would Kim be Kim Kardashian steamy. is going to be acting in something next year? American Horror Story. American, American Horror Story. Story. We're talking about it. Okay. Um, okay. Finally, we need this, someone very snappy for the front desk. We've got the perfect person. We sure do. Cheryl, Cheryl Lee, Lee Ralph. Ralph. Come on. Sign her up. It is Cheryl Lee Ralph's year. Yes, she'd be so good she'd in White great. Lotus. All right, good. Done and done. Okay, great. All right, coming up next, guys. Should you give the ring back if the engagement is called off? I know. We're going to do something we've never done. We're going to dish on some reality TV dilemmas right after this. So you guys know this. Our show has social dilemmas and relationship dilemmas, but now it's time for a new edition. 
reality dilemmas. Okay, we are so happy because pop culture expert and Bravo personality Darren Karp is here. She's going to share the latest drama on some of the hottest reality shows, which we know nothing about. Zero. So we're in it with you. And then we're going to weigh in on the dilemmas. Okay. All right, we need your opinion. Okay. Ready? First up, there's a big debate over... Love is Blind, a ring in yes. Love is Blind. So will you explain this to us? Okay, so Love is Blind is essentially, yeah. that's the premise. I mean, yeah. you fall in love behind pods, right? There's like a male pod, there's a female pod. You yes. get to know each other for a few days, yeah. and then you decide to get engaged. Whoa. Now, Jackie and Marshall, two a couple that decided to get engaged in the pods, then they live together to see if they can actually go through <laughs> with a marriage. He proposes, she says yes. A few days later, she realizes he's just too nice for her, okay? Oh, jeez. So... Let's just take a look at this clip, and I, I got a couple questions for you guys. I'm dying to know, you kept the ring. Yes, ma'am, I have the ring still. She said, yes, ma'am. Why do you think he wanted it back? And you could be completely candid. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall wanted the ring back because he wanted to propose to another castmate. Huh? He did, first of okay, all, he looked so shocked. Give it to us. Jackie is now with Josh. She leaves Marshall, goes with Josh, who she's now currently still with and living with. You saw Marshall yeah. in the, in so the lower Josh left. Josh was another guy on Love is Bind? Yeah. Another guy that she dumped, that she didn't want to be with. Okay, okay? so dumped. then she gets proposed to Marshall. She yeah. ends it, goes with another guy. Yeah. She won't give the ring back to oh. him. So here's the dilemma. Should you always give a ring back if you're ending an engagement? Now, keep in mind, she ended the engagement. He did not end the engagement. I see you both smiling, <laughs> I'm and I'm sorry. terrified of these responses. I mean, I'm I, gonna go with you. I would, why would <laughs> yeah. I go with no, you? No, no, I mean, look, I think you probably should return it. I think that's probably the nice thing to do. In your past the experience, I don't <laughs> think there's any reason to revisit that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Putting, probably, these are reality dilemmas for a reason. I'm okay, real. so what do you think? What's the right thing to do here? Well, I think if it's if the woman ends the engagement. Okay, and doesn't really give the guy a chance, which she didn't in this case. Yeah. And she kind of silenced him at the reunion, refused to go, right. didn't let him respond to her, right. and accused him of wanting to propose to someone else, which he didn't. I do think she, yeah, should, she give should give it back. back. Yeah, we're with Give you. it back. We're definitely on he, that. He, he, by okay. the way, it might be his grandma's. Okay, come in. Yes. Be See, right? Very good See, point. Right? Genesis. Okay, what's um, next? Okay, Jersey Shore family vacation, <laughs> which I didn't even know was still on the air. <laughs> what's happening <laughs> here? A divorce party, too. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Jersey Shore, this has been around for more than a decade. I mean, it's still wild. It's got antics. They travel all around. So Angelina was married to this guy, uh, Chris. They ultimately divorced. And in order to kind of celebrate this, Snooki steals her $10,000 wedding dress. They go to New Orleans and they have a little party. Take a look at it. So I took your wedding Don't dress. Be mad. What the f Don't be mad because this is a nice ritual. We're celebrating your divorce. Now you can be happy. You have a great man with you. So we got to say goodbye to the dress. Oh, my Don't God. She was going to wear it at the new wedding. Oh I know. She was going to wear it at the she next wedding. She was going to repurpose it. We're burning it. Oh. I paid all this money for this wedding dress, and then all of a sudden now we, we're in a cemetery and we're lighting it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. You did it, girl. Seems very $10,000 $10, wedding dress. Shh. Our divorce party is a good idea. Do we need a party for everything? No. I don't think so. I, th I think, like, once you're past it, like, I think there's a point that you're past it that the burning of it and all of that Feels stuff. too much. Isn't, yeah, it's so like satisfying. I think there's a point where if you're really done with it, she may not be. I don't, you know, you never know. It could be all these old hurts. Right. But I, th I get where you want to, like, let something out and yeah. let some rage out. In but front of millions of people, In of front course, of millions. And have your vengeance. I yeah. know. And here's the other thing. What? Angelina was in love with her cast member, Vinny. That didn't work out. Now she's dating a new Vinny oh, wait, from Staten Island. Before Wait. Vinny and Angelina? They had intimate relations one time. Oh, one time. Years Wait, ago. There's okay. another Vinny? There's another Vinny she's from dating. From Staten Island? Also from Staten Island. Who was at the party. Oh, see? Good? I know. Okay, Vinny's you're work. the best, and we <laughs> want more of yes, you. Yes, please, um, please. That's, the, that's what we yeah. decided yes. over everything. Yeah. Okay, coming it. up next, y'all, the social media influencer who was making hundreds of thousands of dollars. So why did she give it all up? We're going to find out coming up right after this.
having a career as a social media influencer, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, may seem like the dream job, a lot of job that kids are hoping for. Yeah, but not for one woman you're about to meet who was recently featured in the New York Times style section. Life as an influencer wasn't all it was cracked up to be, and it began to take its toll. Take a look. On her social media profile, Lee Tillman lived a life so many dream about. Good morning, everybody. I just put up my holiday gift guide. In 2019, she had almost 400,000 followers on her wellness Instagram account, Lee from America. She posted about everything from food to travel to her relationships. No topic was off limits. Hi, guys. So I'm planning out a tongue scraping tutorial and post. 54% of young Americans say they want to be a social media influencer. And at her peak, Lee says she took home $300,000 in one year from her sponsored post. I thought, what would it be like if I could create my own career and be my own boss? I could probably make more money and have more freedom and get to do what I want to do versus waiting for someone else to tell me when I can get the green light to get a promotion. But after four years as a full-time influencer, Lee said it all went wrong and then she went dark. What led to the breakdown was a, a, a bunch of things, but it was just kind of burnout from the grind of creating content every single day. I was reading the comments and um, I just kind of um, went to a really dark place. Now Lee is opening up about the toll that lifestyle took on her real life and mental health, her decision to stop influencing full time and why she's never been happier. Oh, and we're oh my so happy because Lee is with us right now. Wow. Lee, I feel like this is a different side of the story than we've heard. Mm -hmm. I think the glossy sort of influencer life is one that we look up to yeah. as sort of an easy way to make a ton of money. Yeah. But you, as you said, it really took a toll on your mental yeah. health. Yeah, that underbelly. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was a really lonely experience going through that because it is such a dream job of people's. And it was my dream job at, at one point, you know, and I really loved it until I didn't. And when I wanted to leave and not do it anymore, I didn't know how to exit because everybody was like, why would you ever want to do it? This is the ultimate job. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what you said was important too. You said you started reading the comments yeah. and you went to a dark place. The comments are what sustain you, what give you your livelihood, but it can also be what hurts you, what damages you, what brings you down. Mm -hmm. Is that what you found? Totally. And in other industries, like when you're an author, you're told not to read reviews, don't yeah. read the good reads. But when you're an influencer, the comments are in your, that's where your community is. Yeah. And I built my my career and my, my following by reading those comments and responding. And then when they started getting mean, just yeah. at, when you get to a certain point and when, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are following you, you're going to see a lot of people writing their opinion about you and you yeah. have to read them. And it's just really hurtful. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk about how, um, I mean, we said in the piece and then she went dark, but how mm -hmm. um, painful it got. Mm -hmm. What happened sort of that made you go, mm -hmm. go away? Yeah, so uh, it was a series of things. I received backlash for an event that I was promoting on my Instagram. And I think it was also burnout of just kind of four years of mm -hmm. doing that every day, posting three to four grid posts a day, mm -hmm. you know, 10 to 15 stories a day. Wow. You know, and I was doing that all myself. Um, and um, just, I think, the paranoia and mm -hmm. realizing, looking around and looking at other people, and I was like, I've lost the ability to talk to someone in yeah. person because yeah. I'm living on this yeah. phone. Did, totally. your, did those skills, because there are skills, obviously, to being an influencer, do they translate into any kind of profession or job? Are you like, I'm glad I did that because now X, Y, Z? Well, totally. I mean, the influencer economy is a, is a multi-billion yeah. dollar economy, mm -hmm. and it's just growing year after year mm -hmm. after year. And so I have an, a unique insight because mm -hmm. I've been there and at, at one point or the other, influencing is basically sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. You're marketing yourself and then the way you're making money is you're working with brands and you're partnering and you're promoting the product mm -hmm. in a way that feels organic and authentic. Mm -hmm. And consumers are smart these days. So they really want to connect with an influencer who really is using a product that makes sense with their brand. And so I have the experience of, you know, doing the product promotion, but also building my own brand as well. Um, yeah. I think, you know, we both have young yeah. girls. And mm -hmm. um, what would you tell, like, because there's there's so much of what's online isn't real. I mean, you could probably t tell us a million stories about these pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say to, to young girls or to moms of young girls about how to make sure our, we stay living in the real yeah. world? Yeah, I would say just make sure that there's balanced screen time now is so important. When I was an influencer, my screen time was eight hours a day. Wow. And now it's two hours a day. Wow. 
So I'm so much more balanced. I'm not completely off of it, but just that balance of learning to live with it because I don't think it's going anywhere away anytime soon. So just learning to kind of balance and monitor that screen time and making sure that they're also living a full life offline as well. You ha you're happier now? Mm -hmm. I could and tell. have a fuller yeah. life? Gotta, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Full life. Wow. wow. So, well, well we thank you for telling we think, your story. I think you're like going to be a trend starter because oh. I think I think there are going to be people who see the underbelly and say, wait, there's a great life on the other side. 100%. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. All right. Coming up next, our pal Jet Tila is in the kitchen. Yeah, he's going to show us how to make a favorite food that's fun for the kids, too, right after this. Nice. your kids like to help you in the kitchen. We've got a dish that's super simple and fun to make. Jet Tila is gonna show us how to make the perfect spring roll. He is the executive chef of Payway Asian Kitchen. Payway, by the way, all over yes, the country. Everywhere. Everyone's talking about <laughs> Payway. Man, it's like music to my ears. Yeah, okay. um, springtime means spring rolls, in yeah, my opinion, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, kind of the perfect vessel, uh, perfect snack, perfect meal, uh, perfect to get your kids to eat healthy. Wait, now where do you, what is this? These are rice vermicelli noodles. Rice? Uh, just about every Can store you buy has rice them. Rice vermicelli. Where in the yeah. pasta section? Um, yeah, I would buy them in the dry Asian section. Okay. Uh, every every market. It doesn't yeah. have to be Asian market. Okay. Uh, we're gonna put them in hot water. It's not boiling, right? Just that, hot. Just hot, and, but tepid hot, like pretty hot. And how? And then long? we're gonna scoop them out just until the your... short. Yeah, don't do this at home, by the way. This is pretty hot. Yeah. Um, when they get nice and pliable, uh, yeah. we're going to swap to them. But once they're pliable, I want you to take them out and then let them uh, carry over not on yet. the board. But okay. not yet, not right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about fillings. Uh, I like uh, just regular lettuce. And it could be butter lettuce. It could be iceberg Romaine, lettuce. Any kind of lettuce. Romaine. Like. Um, just uh, shredding. Uh, okay. Carrot shredding can be a little scary sometimes. I know. I'm scared. So yeah. you know what? Uh, get one of Use these little grater. julienners. Yeah. Oh, right? Oh, oh, look at that. Wait. Little julienners. Watch. Oh, watch. Look at that. Wait. What is that? It pulls the carrot. In Wait, the what are you talking Isn't about? That fun? That's not like a mandolin. Nobody where you can knows cut about this. Up, right? No, it's not like a mandolin. It's just like Look, a pulley girl. peeler that's got little shreds in it. Can Nobody you use that, that with cheese? No. Anything, yeah, uh, firm cheese. Promise, okay. firm cheese? Yeah, I feel firm. like my mom yeah. used to use that. Melted okay. cheeses. Okay, uh, now what? All right, now uh, shrimp is going to be joining in this peanut sauce, mm -hmm. right? But how about, uh, you want to do that? Yeah, what is Poison. this? Poison. Poison. Poison sauce. Look at, look at that thick. Uh, like, uh, it's totally vegetarian, poison uh, sauce. A little water. Actually, we all should do it. Jenna, here you go. Yes. Uh, rice vinegar. Where, what, right? Can you use any peanut butter, or do you have a specific one you like? I am all about the kind we grew up with, but you can get pretty, like, healthy and yeah. hippie with it if you want. No, okay. But uh, the I like okay. the old, old school. Okay. So you so mix that's that going to become an emulsion. Oh, yeah, wait, exactly. What's going on here? All right, so now we're going to talk about rice papers, how to get them soft. The secret to rice papers is they're not always consistent. Just give them a quick soak. And the first Cold few... Cold or warm, or does it uh, matter? Well, you know, warm is the best. So let's round the corner. Okay, round the corner. Come, round the corner. Come, round the corner. Let's do this. Go, girl. Um, all right. So, so you want to get it soaked until it's... I basically want to get it soaked till it's uh, pliable, uh, until it pliable. rolls over on okay. itself. Okay, oh, right? I see. And once it rolls over on itself, I can kind of test it on the board. Okay, let's build. Can I ask you something? Yeah, do you need to put like can. flour down or something so it doesn't stick? You know what we do in the professional kitchen? A really good tip is instead of flour, just a little bit of spray oil. A little, um, what? A little spray oil, a spray and oil. that'll help you out. So, okay, so these are um, carrots. So everything we talked about: noodles, vegetables, oh, shrimp. And shrimp. then now, now I'm doing shrimp so today. Me too. But it could be, uh, you What's know, this? if you got a little grilled pork or steak left over, also a really great way to go. What's the um, green? The green is uh, basil. Cilantro. Cilantro. Basil. Cilantro. I love you go, basil. Jenna, you go. Did I do this? Okay. You get it right, right down the middle. Like we're gonna roll forward now. 
Uh, and the secret is right here. Once you roll forward and you get a full turn, bring oh, in your bring sides. Two 90 degree angles. Remember, Got it. Wait. Remember, two 90 degree angles. 290. Make perfect spring rolls. Does this look make a that. perfect spring That's roll? That's pretty perfect. Oh, Boom, wait. look at that. Check look. it out. Jet, wait, no. Oh, jet, look at that. Jet. That's beautiful. What is that? You learned spring jet. rolls in like four minutes. Now the peanut sauce. Wait, Boom. we want to come down here. We want to eat. But look how much this. beautiful, er, uh, if that's yeah. a word, yours are. No, wait, no, not, not at all. Wow. I mean, it's only more symmetrical, but not a big deal. Um, again, these are really great for spring. Uh, I, 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 my mm. kids actually eat healthy food mm. in spring rolls. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm. Ching, ching. Mm. I, I think mm. my kids would eat a spring roll. Mm. Is yeah. that crazy? That is so good. Oh, so the best. Mm. Right? Uh-huh. Aren't you so happy? And get your kids to cook with you in the kitchen. We're so Eat happy. these for spring. Happy spring, everybody. Happy mm -hmm. spring, Jeff. <laughs> All right, for these recipes, go to today.com slash food. Mm -hmm. Up next, clean beauty products you're going to love right after this. I love double dip. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're sharing one? Yeah. Ingredients, less packaging, <laughs> less waste. All good things when it comes to the beauty products we use every day. So as we approach Earth Day, we're taking a closer look at clean beauty with people, style, and beauty director and our friend, Andrea Leventhal. She's got dozens of items that you tried out and you narrowed it down to these great ones. How are you? I'm um, good. Yeah. You know, clean beauty is tricky because there's like no one definition of mm -hmm. what clean beauty means. So for these brands, mm -hmm. they're all made with ingredients that are safe for people and the planet. Mm -hmm. They all use some kind of sustainable packaging, okay. so refillable, recyclable, and they're very transparent about their practices. Cool. Practices. Awesome. So what is this? This is a cleansing stick by the brand Betty Green, and it's created especially for teens and tweens, which is what I thought was very special about it. Cool. You put it on your face. You can see these beautiful ladies demoing. Right. You wash it off, and it's really to help... You know, develop a skincare routine at a young age, but with products that are gentle. Yeah. And these are plant-based surfactants, so it's not going to strip that very gentle young skin. Betty Green. Don't Betty forget Green. that oh, name. Cool. I love the name oh, of it. Oh, me too. What is this, baby? Okay, so Pacifica <laughs> is a great brand. You can get it at the drugstore. And this is a body serum, mm -hmm. which is basically a fancy way of saying you spray it on at night. It helps hydrate your skin. Yeah. It brightens. Mm -hmm. But this brand... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. This brand is great because it's vegan mm -hmm. and the bottle is aluminum which means it's fully recyclable oh. so you're going to put it on at night and you're going to wake up you don't up need much so i bet it lasts a long yeah, time yeah i bet it does you're just going to wake up glowing <gasps> head to smell. toe Mm -hmm. Yeah, it smells right. good. Okay. okay, next. Beauty Counter is one of my favorite yeah, brands. Yeah, everybody talks about Beauty mm -hmm. Counter. So they're famous for their Never List, and that's 2,800 ingredients they will never use. So I'm like, what's well, left? That's yeah. Right? So, yeah, what is so left? So what's left in this, um, this is an exfoliating powder. A powder. It's made with two ingredients. You mix it with your cleanser or even just water, water. just a tiny bit, and you exfoliate your skin. And if you want a deeper exfoliation, use a little more. But really, it's just meant to be a gentle buff. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, okay, these sort of... The coolest. Yeah. Okay, so this is the brand Super Zero. It is the first solid 
bar hair products. I feel in like Sephora. I've seen this a lot. Very cool. This is like what we're all going to be it. using before we know it. So it's Are a shampoo and for conditioner. Real? Really, look yes, at that. Be so, honest, does it guys, work? I've been using it. Really? I'm very picky about my hair. Do you hair. only use these? I don't only use them, okay. but I've been I've been like sampling them for the past few days. I have to say, I love it. This is so concentrated. It's five times more than a traditional bottle of shampoo or conditioner. So you get. It's two eight-ounce bottles in these bars. What? Wait. So you could travel with this. It's not going to spill. Basically, you lather it up in your hand. You work it into and your it hair. And it gets the same mm. sort of suds that you want. It's incredible. And the conditioner, too? The conditioner is great. You rub it on the ends of your hair. It feels nice and creamy. I, I swear, I'm That's very wild. picky. Okay. I right. like it. Feels it feels good. It feels really good. It smells really good. So this is a very cool brand. This is Stranded, and this is oh, yeah. a moisturizing hand lotion. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was so cool about this, in addition and to moisturizing, right? Yes. Products that you put on every day, multiple times a day, that are meant to sit on your skin. If you're going to go clean with something, that's the one. That's, oh, by the way, that's great advice. That's right? actually the one you don't you're going to get. You have to swap out everything. Yeah. But something you use this every much, day, yeah. plus it feels nice and smells good. And yeah. It's not so drying. No, it's nice and moisturized. Oh, All right, yes, foundation. Okay, everyone loves this brand. It's very buzzy. It's Say Beauty. What I love about it is it actually performs really well, right? So, like, you're not going to use a clean beauty product if it doesn't do what right. it's no. supposed to. This foundation makes you glowy. It's sort of like a skincare product that covers. Oh, I like it. And Say is I great. Like they have five third-party certifications. That good. They are carbon neutral. They're climate they're neutral. Bad. They're plastic negative. Wow. So you know it's a safe but brand. No, this, so this is like a foundation or yeah. it's more of like a... It's a foundation, but it really does skin care for you. Yeah, I love it. And I like that there are multiple shades. Me so too. Oh, there's like everybody. 30 shades. You're cool. good. Andrea. Thank, Andrea. You, Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much. Okay, up next, we're going to have a ball playing the wall with game show host Chris Hardwick right after this. I like that. Wow. We're in the dark. It's the <laughs> hit game show that's given away more than $25 million. We're talking about The Wall. It is hosted by Emmy winner Chris Hardwick. The game's really simple. The contestants answer some questions for a chance to win big bucks based on where the ball lands after it gets sent down the wall. Oh, my gosh. And we are so lucky because today Chris has brought in a mini version of the wall, it's still seven feet tall. I yeah, I, I brought this. From, you brought it in your suitcase? Yeah, I, yeah, I just in the overhead compartment. I know um, how you do. Okay, yeah. so the wall's back for the fifth season. What yes. do you love about this? Yeah. I love the show because I love game shows. I love flashy game shows, but I just love the contestants on this show are such wonderful, shiny examples of human beings that I just adore all of them. It's an absolute joy. Well, to we got one of those shiny examples right here to play with us. Our new friend, Leigh Carney, she's from Perlin, Texas. She's visiting. Her sister, Jackie, is there as her cheerleader. All right, Chris, take it away. Okay, so Leigh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a, a, a mini version of the wall. I'm going to ask you five questions. Okay. And for every question you get right, we get to drop a ball down the wall, and then wherever it lands, you just get to take that home. All right. Wow. I'm going to give you cash this morning. Which is nice. Yeah. Right? Come sure. to New York, get some money. Uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, question number one Which piece of demolition equipment shares its name with a hit by recording star Miley Cyrus? A, Wrecking Ball, B, Jackhammer. A, Wrecking Ball. Yes, yes, we we are. Are. That is a correct answer. 
One ball. We're one for one. Yeah, come on. Let's go. So we do. Yeah, we're going to do all the questions first, then we're going to drop those. Okay, question number two. Pop star Lizzo is classically trained to play and often performs live with which musical instrument? Flute or violin? B, violin. Oh, oh close. It's actually the flute. That's all right. I like how you said one. that with such you certainty. I know. Go, exactly. Girl. Exactly. Uh, okay, question number three. Which article of clothing is also the name of a number one hit song by Taylor Swift? Vest or cardigan? B, cardigan. Yes! yes. yes. Cardigan is a confident. correct. No, but you are right. This You got it. You got two, you got two for three. Okay, question number four. The jeweler Tiffany and Company owns the trademark for a specific shade of which color is it? The audience already knows. Is it purple or blue? Blue. Yes. Oh, very good. Yes. Okay. All right. We are, okay. You're, this is the last question. So you could go uh, four out of five if you get this one right. In which state is Dolly Parton's theme park Dollywood located? Texas or Tennessee? I want to say Texas because that's where I'm from, but it's Tennessee. Yes. Tennessee is the correct answer. You're four for five. You have four out of five questions. That means you could win up to a thousand dollars. So uh, yeah, exactly. So Hoda and Jenna, you're gonna get to pick. Uh, okay. Lay, where do you want to drop? Tell where us you where to drop, drop it, Lay. Call this one, two, three, four, five. Where do you want to drop the first? Let's one? do five. Five. Okay, Jenna, Jenna's going for the okay. first one. Extra luck. Extra luck. There it goes. And it do, 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 doing the sound effect. Do, do, do. Oh no! Oh. No! No! no. That's not cool. I got you, girl. All right. I'm going to let Hoda do the next. next. Let's do three. Three. All right. I like, I like that. Here we go. Let's I got to do the sound effects. Do, 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 do. Fifty dollars. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Ball number three. Where's it going, Lay? Where do we? Jenna, you got it. Okay, where? Let's do four. Four. Okay, come, come on. Four. All right. Come on, Jenna. Let's go. Come on. Wait, if that goes to zero, I want to redo it. Zero. I'm oh, not, wait, no, no, I'm not a fan of that. Don't worry. Come on, Lay. Right, let's, move, let's move to the left. Let's do one. Let's do one. Okay, oh. number one. Wish you good luck. Oh, um, wait. <laughs> no, get it off. You do it. That is so mean. Okay. Oh, it's going down the middle. This is looking really... Fifty! A hundred dollars! You've won a hundred dollars! Fifty plus fifty. Fifty plus fifty is wall. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Lay, Thank you for being Lay, here. Lay, I love you and I apologize. If it goes to zero. But one one more down. Two fifty! Can we give her that instead of one of the zeros? We're giving it to you, Lay! in the dressing room. We'll pull it. Three, uh, so 350, you're going to go home with 350 Thank today, Lay. Thank, Thank you, Lay. Thank you so much. Hey, Chris, we understand why you're an Emmy winner. Yes. Good job, Thank honey you bunch. very much. All right. And you can catch new episodes of The Walls Tuesdays at 9, 8 Central, right here on NBC. We'll be back after this. I like it up here. I'm sorry for the zeros. Jen and I are going to have some fun. We're going to hit New York City with a can of spray paint. It's legal. It's legal. We promise. Mostly. Kind of. <laughs> okay, plus new movies and TV shows to add to your weekend watch list. All right, we're going to see you on Friday. Guess what? You're almost there, guys. Just exhale. It's Thursday. <laughs> Let's go. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh. You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. You all love Al Roker. <laughs>
you know what? I would love for you to join me. Uh-huh. You should. <laughs> Four months ago to the day, Janet Jackson invited this girl from Wichita, Kansas to be her backup dancer on tour. Well, you didn't have to ask me twice. I am hours away from hitting that stage and living my best life. That's right, I am on center stage at the Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida. Oh, baby, it's Janet. For Janet's opening weekend of her Together Again tour, her first major tour in four years. When fans from all over the country and different cities come to see the show, what do you want them to feel? Joy, just complete bliss, excitement. I want them to reminisce about great times in their lives when this song comes on, that song comes on, just happiness. And not to be corny, but it's been such a long time since I've been with the fans, so this is, this is for them. On that note, how do you feel, especially with a tour like this? Is it exciting? Is it challenging? Is it exhilarating? Maybe all of it? It's all of that. It really is, especially getting the show together. I love production rehearsals when the stage is up and we get to do the wardrobe changes and really, really dig into it. And I didn't get as many days as I would have loved to have, so we did like one full dress rehearsal literally the day before the, the day before the show and they worked out fine and then they went to finish for the for last night's show i was just about to ask you janet what is it about being on stage and performing that you love i enjoy it i enjoy dancing i enjoy performing for the fans i enjoy just sharing what i've created i love putting a show together creating it with gil gil dual de Lau, and it just gives me so much joy and to say look look at what we've created and i hope that mm-hmm. they enjoy it knowing that i like it and i love performing it hope they enjoy it watching it you have so many you know songs that fans love but is there any song in particular that I guess when you look out into the crowd and they're singing it back to you, that you feel most connected to them? Oh my gosh, there's a, it's a couple of times in the show that it happened, but I think one of, one of the nicest moments for me is uh, when, I, when I, I do again and um, when they sing it to me. Mm. And I, I love that, I can hear them. And, and that sounds so beautiful to me, them knowing that melody, thinking, oh my God, how many years ago was it mm. that, that I, I, I wrote that song? And, and just listening to them, and a melody that you've come up with, and lyrics that you've come up with, that you've created, and, and having this group of people just singing it back to you. you know, I, 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 I love that. It, it's just, it's beautiful. Is there anything that you do uh, before you hit the stage you know, when you perform or a ritual, or is there anything that you say to yourself? Or? Always pray. We, as a group, we always pray. And I myself, I always give it up to God. Mm. I say, God, from this, this, this point on, I said, it's, I'm releasing it to you. It's, it's in your hands. And, and that's who I trust the most. By the way, I should mention we're, uh, you're letting cameras kind of follow you around for an upcoming documentary. You're still developing this but we know it involves family, this yes. tour. Family, the tour, there are some surprises. I think it'll be uh, quite fun. I, I hope that the audience enjoys it. And I'm, I'm so thankful that it was as, as successful as it was. You know, you're just moseying along for five years and talking about your life and friends and family and work and this and that. And, and it was it was it was difficult at times. At times, it was a breeze, um, very uh, cathartic, therapeutic. Uh, it's like you were in a session at times. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I enjoyed it. The press release that they sent out with this new one, it has a picture of the family on the front. It talks about the family, you know, back together for a reunion. Do you think there would be a time when you guys would perform together or I get on a so. stage? I hope so. Why do you think now is the time uh, in the season that you're in in your life now to share a little bit more of you or to share some of those things? You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm not as shy as I used to be, so I'm a little bit more open and 
just sharing more in my life than I ever did before and having a, my own family now and allowing to people to see and understand how we came up and what really was, what really happened and how it came about and maybe to help others who want to follow along in that path. That's the key. I mean, even though it's a different time now, but still you can take and learn and this and that and apply what might work today with what happened then. I love that. Do you think yeah. people, or do you feel like your fans really know you? Or is there still room for us to get to know you? I think there's still room, a little bit of room, but they know me sometimes better than I know myself. <laughs> so we're also celebrating 50 years of your career in mm -hmm. entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when you were on the Today Show, I told you, um, I talked about the power of representation and the impact you had on you know, especially brown girls like me growing up in Kansas. And I was thinking about it. I mean, from acting, you know, we saw Penny, you know, on, on Good Times, different strokes. And the kind of family yes, that I did with yes. Eileen Brennan and Rob Lowe and yes. Telma Hopkins. And then even on, obviously, on the singing side, you were cranking out hit after hit after hit. At the time, did you have any idea the impact you were having? No, I was just doing what I loved and, and just thankful to God that I was able to do it. No, not thinking of that at all. I was just going and being excited about, okay, what what, what I'm going to do next, what, what, what excites me to do next, what influences me, what, what moves me to do next. I wasn't really thinking about that. You can be called many things, a singer, Grammy winner, actor, producer, fashion icon, philanthropist, mom. Is there any title that you hold at the top of the list or do they all have a place? in there. I think they all have a place, but the one that gives me the biggest gratification is Mama. That That's goes it. without saying. I said Mama. Janet's son, Issa, just turned six in January. What is it about being a mom that just completes you? Everything. Every, every, when you're tired, when you need a break, I just love it all. I love it all. When, when you're in that moment, you see something special happens. It's like, oh my God. And I know I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking of one thing in particular. And I'll never forget it. And it was just so beautiful. And I just thought, that's my baby. That's, that's, you're making me emotional because I get it. I have three little ones. It puts everything in perspective. That's the highest for me, being a mama. Oh okay, God. so finally, let's talk about tonight. But me being here all started with good old fashioned <laughs> Today Show Halloween. Can I tell you what I was thinking, Janet? Tell me. Okay, the whole time I was like, I mean, I don't think Janet Jackson would actually be watching the Today Show, but if she is watching the Today Show, I just don't want her to be like, ooh, would that girl please Sit down. <laughs> no, you know I saw this. No way. Yeah, I saw this and I loved it. I saw this and I absolutely loved it. I thought you did a wonderful Thank job. Thank you. Okay, so Miss Jackson thinks I did a good job, but I had a month to rehearse that. I now had to learn a new routine in just hours. To help me loosen up, Janet took me to look at her tour wardrobe. These are the costumes for the show. Wow. Um. Is it heavy? No, this is light. Valentino did this for Ooh. me. This is light. This is my opening cat suit. They did this cape. Pia Paolo did. This is heavy. It makes me feel very, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. And he also did. How gorgeous is this? Mm -hmm. I would wear this. Can I wear this? I'm just yeah, once I finish it, <laughs> okay, then good. sure. There you go. I needed it until seriously, then. Seriously, like the shoulder, like the cut of it. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful with this, this skirt. Ooh. Look at that. And then the inside. Ooh. So it's beautiful. And it's, it's, it's got weight That's to it. I was it. about to say, it feels kind yeah. of heavy. And then Christian did this. Christian Soriano did this for me. Ooh. This one, the more, a little lighter part of the show. Love. And it's, uh, he did it so quickly, and it fits so nicely. It just hugs your body and easy to dance into. And Ooh. Chris John, he's been a friend of mine for a good while. Mm, mm. Chris John Louboutin. And yes. he, he, I just called him up and I said, Mama needs some new shoes. I mean, <laughs> if Mama needs new shoes, these aren't bad. <laughs> Do you ever want to keep some things? Like some of these, I would want to keep. Like this, or the boots. It's, it's or, beautiful. Or well, do you let I, it go? Well, when I did the auction, I let everything go, but there was one thing I, I didn't let go. 
What was that? And that was my or, or, original, original. I had two original Rhythm Nation costumes. Mm. And one of them that I wore, I let go. And the other original, I kept from my baby. That's worth it. Oh, my that's sweet. And if, if he wants to throw it out, He's then he can. Once Janet had calmed my nerves from an 11 to about a 10 and a half, it was time for her to take me to meet my fellow dancers. This is our path that you see all this glow tape in there. Is it crew it guys. a little lighter than this when you're doing no, this? No, it's darker than this. Oh all you see are silhouettes. Ooh, so let me sit out. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, as all you right. say, release you uh, into yeah, the wild. <laughs> Give it up to God the way I do every okay, night. It's okay. in his hands. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jay. I'm, I'm a step out. Okay. All, All right. right. Have fun. All right. But right now, fun was feeling more like fear. But I had to put those nerves aside. Five, six, seven, eight. Lost it a bit. Hey. And then I found out Janet wanted me to come out hey. during Together Again, the encore song. Crazy. This was huge. She trusted me. I had to nail it. I'll just anything. go upstairs and practice that little thing. I spent the next two hours practicing in my room until it was showtime. And suddenly my nerves melted away and I just embraced the magic of the moment. And the next thing I knew, I was dancing with Janet Jackson. Go on, Cheryl. But just like her music, Janet just wanted me to smile to the very end.
There are three of the world's most famous brothers, the Jonas Brothers. Get it, Joe, Nick. The Jonas Brothers have grown up before our eyes. Welcome to the Jonas family household. This is our life. Their chart-topping hits are a soundtrack for generation. This week, they hit the bright lights of Broadway. The, the boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. Five night residency. Five Broadway. Nights. Yes. Each night highlighting a, a different album, including the newest. What, what can fans expect? Fans can expect um, us forgetting lyrics. And helping us. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, to be clear, Joe forgetting lyrics. Well, you want to yeah, bet on that, I've Kev? You want to bet on that? I've done my. I went to rehearsal last week. I never did Broadway, so this is my debut. This is your Broadway debut. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> these, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Broadway um, vets. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'll show you the ropes, Kev. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. They're walking me around backstage, but the uh, the fact that my kids are able to come to a show like this week and experience this. Yeah. It brings a. It's a whole other reason to do this every day. Looks like this is gonna be one hell of a show. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure uh, it out. It yeah. might break up before the shows are over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the fans can expect uh, albums from our past, starting in 2007. Um, tonight, night one, we're playing a self-titled album, Jonas Brothers, and uh, this is something we thought about, honestly, maybe a month and a half ago. We were thinking how fun it would be to put a show together for fans um, leading up to our new album. And we've never played a, a record before releasing it. So this will be the first to play it in its entirety. Yeah. Um, uh, and this theater, it, it means a lot to us. Nick, when he was, and I'm probably stealing some of your questions, but Nick, when he was, was it seven, eight years old? Eight. eight well, he was 22 on, years ago. He was on that stage performing with Reba McIntyre uh, for Andy Get Your Gun. So it's yeah. like full circle. Wow. I'm back. It's been a wild ride for the three New Jersey brothers who thrilled fans in 2019 when they famously reunited after a six year split. Their new album called The Album drops in May. Had the Jonas Brothers not broken up, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have this album. Definitely today. not. You might have the Broadway show, uh, but you know, without any new music. Yeah. It's all the old music. All the old yeah. Exactly. Let's let's talk about this this new album. Yeah. The album. The album. Get the title. What's the story there? How did how did that come about? The story is that we kind of sat down and thought of a bunch of different names, and then we thought about the intention of it all. And if we set out to just say, if you're going to listen to any one of our albums, we think this is the album you should listen to. This is the one that is the the most quintessential Jonas Brothers, where we are now, and it just felt like the right title. The album, this one I'm listening to it, I mean, it does have this sort of retro 70s feel to it. Was, was that the intention? We, def we definitely pulled from a lot of inspiration. Working with John Bellion, our producer, um, in right around this project, it was unbelievable. We knew that that's where we wanted to, you know, pull a lot of the inspiration from, but being able to really trust him with this process and help us bring that sound forward and be competitive now and. 2023 versus, you know, not just a tribute album to the 70s. You know, this is who we are. And from things like Jefferson Starship, you know, the Eagles, bands we grew up listening to. The Bee Gees. From our, yeah, the Bee Gees. Bee -Gees. From our, with our father. Like, we are a band of brothers that sing together in harmony and other things, but also still a band. So what you see on stage in a live format, we really wanted to be able to bring out in the music when you're listening to it as you're driving down the road in your car. And you guys all live in different cities now, New Jersey and Miami and LA. What was it like physically just being back in the studio together again yeah. as brothers? Well, we had been playing some shows in Vegas and other places, and we, I think, started to feel that chemistry that uh, only really happens when you're together and playing shows. Uh, COVID was, was tough for everybody, but for our sort of creative journey and chemistry, it, it was challenging. Um, so getting back on stage, being in front of our fans was the first step. And then I think once we got in the studio, started working with John, we all felt like uh, it was just clicking and all, you know, firing on all cylinders. And the, the themes too, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about where we were as people first and, and what we wanted to say. Uh, I think one of the things that, that I love about uh, being in this band with, with my brothers is that 
we really get to use our music as a way to express ourselves, uh, and, and it's really authentic to us. Um, and that shows, you know, from from every album we put out and whatever chapter of our journey we were on. But I think this one uh, does a good job of embodying kind of where we are as fathers, where we are as as husbands, and and just brothers, family. I enjoyed the video for Wings. The music video for Wings off the new album features White Lotus star Haley Lou Richardson, who happens to be a super fan. She's been a longtime fan and said some really nice things about the, the band and what it means to her to be a fan now in her adult years as opposed to being a fan when she was a kid. And so when we were thinking of the, the concept for the video, you know, we all were like, what, what if we gave her control and let her kind of take the lead here and just do whatever she wanted? Um, she absolutely nailed it. Turns out she has a, a, a dancing background, which none of us do, and she's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, every interview and thing she said about that experience afterwards has meant the world to us. But it's truly like including a, a, a real lifelong fan in our, in our video. So hopefully the fans enjoyed that perspective as well. And it's one of my favorites we've done. You've got tracks on the album called Vacation Eyes. Uh, Little Bird, my personal favorite, being from the South, uh, Waffle House. Um, favorite songs from, from this new album? Well, and we'll start with you, Kev. Um, I think Vacation Eyes. Uh, you know, it's a song, it's about finding that love that you find on vacation. You know, those moments you find that are supposed to only be there on vacation, but you take it home with you and you want to live that moment for the rest of your life. And Which that's you did, didn't you? That's exactly what happened to me. Uh, that's where I met my wife. We met in the Bahamas and oh, wow. um, on the family vacations. Uh, we were young, but it worked out, man. And he like stalked her afterwards. I did. It was fine. It worked out. Hey, worked you know out. what? Sometimes, no, that's yeah. yeah it worked. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll leave it there. How about you, Nick? Uh, I've got a couple favorites, but I think Little Bird is probably one of my favorites. Uh, maybe the favorite uh, as a new father. You know, really meaningful to me. And I think for for our fans too, they're the, the same kind of places in their lives as we are, um, you know, and a lot of them having children or have children. Uh, and so I think it's, it's really an anthem about what it is to be a parent and, and that feeling of wanting to protect, you know, your, your little one. And, and uh, you know, Kevin has little birds tattooed on him, uh, which was kind of the, um, I guess the catalyst of the song coming and speaking to John about it. Um, so again, all these really personal themes and this one just hits home for me. So, my favorite song on the album changes constantly. I think today it would be Walls. It's our closing song for the album, and um, we got to share a snippet of it. I actually played the whole song via record player in our Vegas shows. And the song just gets you hyped. And John Bellion is featured on that track. Um, it's the only song we have a feature on. And that one, it, it's, it's hard to really describe what it's like, but it is epic, and um, it, gets, it gets you going. The Jonas Brothers now gearing up for a new era and taking nothing for granted. We've already uh, had success and failed. Um, and we've seen what it feels like to fail. And I think now we're just having fun uh, in this chapter where we're getting to do new and exciting things that we 
uh, we, we dream up and put together in, in you know, a couple of weeks. And um, we have fans that are, are uh, so supportive of us. And, and we feel like it's like weirdly bigger now because we, we're just having fun uh, as opposed to when we were really stressed about it all working out. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more fun. I think a lot of people would hear you say that you failed and they would disagree with that. They haven't watched a few of uh, my personal performances then. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly had a few uh, therapy sessions that I could include them on, but we can leave that out. <laughs> Learning curves. Learning curves. I mean, way to put yeah. it. We all learn from our mistakes. Totally. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I think the, the band kind of going off doing our own things and, and breaking up was the was really the failure I'm talking about. It's like, um, it was a win for us as family and important at that time, but what came out of it is, is that I think we're all able to look at this and say, what's gonna make us happy? And their families expanded along the way. Kevin, Nick, and Joe, all now dads themselves. Let's talk about the other things that have changed since you guys burst onto the scene. Social media. There's, there's, there was no Instagram, no Facebook, certainly no, no TikTok. Uh, back when yeah. you guys yeah, we had to keep up these days. broke through. It, it's really changed dramatically the way that you interact with your fans. Definitely. How, how so? How so, Joe? I think it's, it's fantastic because you're able to connect with fans on a like, millisecond basis where when we were starting, MySpace was just beginning. We got 100 followers on myspace and we were ready to retire we're like we did it guys we made it we made it let's go i think we even celebrated that night and now it's um it's so interesting i mean for the music industry it's fascinating and inspiring because people are discovering music way faster and way quicker um artists that have completely retired or started new careers are having number ones um i, I find it so um, wonderful for the for music in general, and then film and TV. It's really fascinating, and um, we're just trying to keep up. You know, I think that that's it goes back to what Nick was saying. We just have to have fun in that aspect, yeah. Um, because I think it's a way for you to to really connect with fans and and a humanizing level of being like, this is my life. This is what I'm up to. This uh, this is what I'm drinking today. <laughs> Whatever it may be, it's like that easy, simple connection. What are you drinking today? Uh, a lot of I have fluids, waters. Uh, tea. I'm glad water. you're hydrating. Yeah. Glad Two you're coffees. Hydrating. Two coffees. Don't don't do a third. Take a guess. How many? Two drinks. No. Okay. No. That's not the guess. <laughs> how many? How many millions or billions of views? Hashtag Jonas Brothers on TikTok. Would you guess? I literally Eight billion. Wow. Eight, Eight billion. billion. Where's, where's, where's with the, the with a cam? B. Do they give you a plaque for that? Eight uh, billion dollars. Yes. Does that surprise you at all? Um. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. We. It's not something that we go and say, well, how many billions do we have from doing? <laughs> um, but it's inspiring. That's, that's exciting. That's we're, we're, we're so that's honored. Right. And um, I think it's a great way for people to be discovering our, our new music. I'm loving the evolution of the Jonas Brothers. Thank you. It still seems like it's not lost in you guys. How, how remarkably special this journey has been for you. Like you still seem like you're you're like in we, the moment. I do think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we were younger to get it all right. You know, I think now we just kind of do what we need to do to have fun and continue making music that we love. And I think that's why it's working.
Let's go. Good. Come on, Showtime. I was sitting here thinking uh, before you sat down, I was like, my goodness, this man, I mean, you've been playing in venues all over the world since you were 12, 13 years old. I was like, from Star Search to this. Yeah. I mean, when you think of that part of your journey, does it make this extra special? I mean, it does, because I'm kind of collecting from all of those experiences to now bring me to Las Vegas where I can do things my way. And, you know, just really celebrate being a showman. You know, a little bit of acting because of the theatrical nature of it, the classic songs that have been made number one by the fans who come here. Uh, there are impromptu moments where it becomes about me and the DJ and I'm kind of out in, in the audience. And there's impromptu things that literally happen in this huge production of a show because I have a live band. Uh, but, you know, there's dancing, there's characters, there's singing along, there's great energy. You can't, you know, have a career of 30 some odd years and, you know, not celebrate all of the hits. The hardest problem is selecting them. I was just about to say, because people come and they have their favorite albums, they have their favorite songs, and we're talking decades of music. How do you do that? Do you give them little snippets of songs? Do you try to get all the big ones in? I have what's called um, the donut. The donut is the moment inside of the show that's like a treat. So if there is a song that, you know, somebody whispered to me doing meet and greet, or either okay. I was walking around and, and heard, you know what, we really want to hear this song. If I didn't put that song in the show, then I actually perform it with my band or I have my DJ throw it on and we just sing the song. This show is really my, my take, like my theatrical take on a bit of an immersive kind of journey of how these songs have taken me places or either we've shared yeah. these songs in our real you know, experiences in life. But, you know, it is theatrical. There are, there are moments that are kind of like, you know, they take you to a club in Atlanta, take you to somewhat of a Parisian club where there's, you know, characters in that club and each person plays a role and then the energy goes up and it becomes super sexy time and then we're kind of on demon time and then we kind of move to a place where it's just fun and free. I mean, you could take your show anywhere, you could go on the road, but what is it about Vegas that you said, you know what, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do a residency? Opportunity. You know, if I think of all of the people who come here and the fact that they use this place to celebrate their entire history mm -hmm. and their creativity, this room acoustically is amazing, the sound is amazing. I get a chance to put on a show and not have to travel all around the country, you know, and kind of inconvenience the family that I have now because I got kids that are going mm -hmm. to school, babies that are learning how to swim, mm -hmm. and I want to spend that time uh, still, you know, nurturing my career and, and, and enjoying that, but being able to still be there and be the dad that I want to be. Your favorite moment of the show, this show. Mm. Do you have a favorite moment? Mm. Doing it. <laughs> the favorite moment of the show is actually doing the entire thing like there's this anticipation that this this entire panel right here rises uh at the, the beginning of the show yeah okay and i feel like a giddy like little kid like i go back to like my childhood and me having these visions of like performances and dances you know our kids look in the mirror and they see something else or they're yeah. using their imagination yeah. for me i go back to that kid <laughs> and i'm like man I'm just so excited. And then the door comes up and there they are. And I'm gonna put on a show to remember. Second, um, most incredible moment of the night is when I'm out there okay. with my DJ. I told you about the donut, mm -hmm. right? That moment when I'm just playing those records, it's no production. It's literally, literally just the hit record or the moments. Sometimes it's a B-side. I'm like, oh, I just didn't even know that they remembered this of song. Of course they remember, yeah. yeah. I mean, but hey, you know, yeah. it's really uh, exciting to know that people have been with me all this time. Cause I'm just creating, I'm just, again, being a vessel. And when I hear it, when I see people sing the words, when I, I see them emotional, when I, I, I watch them go through these, these phases, like they don't realize they're looking at me, but I'm literally watching their expression and where they made this connection. Oh, I remember the first time I sang this song and like with their friends laughing, singing the song cause they've been together throughout the years. I see all that. And That's it just good. gives me the energy. It's like ultimate joy to be able to offer somebody else that type of joy. This is a lot. And I know this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. How long did it take to put this whole thing together? Man, uh, it took a lifetime. I mean, the music that I built, 
or the creativity that um, I'm borrowing from, as I've said. You'll see moments that are choreographic for my fans. They're like, oh, they remember certain moments from videos mm -hmm. or they remember certain wardrobe moments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the relationship to create the wardrobe for this show has been a dialogue throughout the years. I worked with Oswald Boateng and mm -hmm. I worked with Micah Mary, uh, Jerry Lorenzo, uh, Fear of God, and, and we created you know, a wardrobe that would tell a story as well. Man, the physical aspect of it, it took, I say, to gather all of it musically, probably about two, three months. Wow. You know, I worked with OTBA, uh, who did an amazing job, uh, Simon Hammerstein, uh, Akamon Jones, uh, Rio Henson, Henderson, sorry. And, so it's a whole. Yeah, it's a whole. And Amy, Amy Allen, all of these incredible people who choreographically helped me tell this story. You know, rather they were actually there with me. Because here's another thing about my crew. Everybody here that's working has either worked with me or for me at some point, mm -hmm. when I say choreographically, or either we dream and talked about this thing that would happen here. Mm -hmm. So to have it all come to fruition over the lifetime that it took to make the songs, or either the two, three months that we, you know, went through all of the choreography and all the lighting cues and all the songs and trying to figure out how to make them perfectly work together for this two hour incredible experience. I, only, I didn't do it alone. I'm going to take you backstage actually and show okay. you some of the wardrobe and some of the other things that, you know, that we do behind the scenes. So here's the thing. Yep. I totally underestimated yep. the magic behind the scenes or how many people it takes to put on a show, really and truly. Yeah. You would think I would know, but there are a lot of people behind I'm Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I mean, for real. Yeah, this is it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm the Wiz. Like too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, you get a chance to see how it works behind the scenes. You know so let's, we're gonna take you behind the scenes. So what will we find? This is like just, just chill space. Okay, you need now, chill space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So you got the ladies yeah. over here, they're now getting ready for the show. Okay. <clears throat> Hair and makeup in here. Hi, ladies. Dancers, performers, everybody's in here. Glam, all the things. And I try to keep a vibe going, as you know, this yeah. is kind of blue and red. Oh, so this you, this is your doing. Yeah, I, I can't, I, yo, when I'm backstage, I can't lose like the vibe. I have to keep the sense. energy. Yeah. And I tell you, it's an immersive experience. Yeah, you know what I'm so even for you. Yeah. yeah. But there's like health and wellness. It's like the wellness room mm. where we have um, acupuncturists and also two massage therapists that are working back here. This is wow. in the bottom room. This is where they work on all the magic, like, Arturo, who was the greatest, yeah, the Nirvana room. Yeah, I'm like, what's that? I want to see. <laughs> Arturo and Christina. The Nirvana room. Hi, everybody. everybody. What are you guys doing? Uh, Some of everything. Pieces, pieces from our I see rope, fur, <laughs> fabric, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, so. What are they doing here? They're Rich? working on wardrobe for the show. Just, you know, there's always something that needs a nip and a tuck or either sure. to be fixed or either adjusted or gusseted. Okay. Because we're dancing, performing in real time, and there's sometimes, you know, wardrobe changes, sure. ideas, you know, things that kind of just elevate the show. Yeah. But they do all of the wardrobe fixes and also to creation. Yeah. Where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> there you go. We realize that y'all are like an important piece of the machine. I would, I would The most important yeah, piece. Yeah, absolutely. Of the so, are we ready? last but not least, the band room. Hi, band room. Hey, How's everybody? Hey, Wait, this might be my favorite room. Hey, and I'm not just saying that. It's that's like, cool. no, no, I, have I said that yet? Nope. See? Oh, <laughs> it's just like chill vibes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what y'all do before the show, guys. Well, it's nice to meet you. Spice water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good stuff. I don't think I can go to just a plain old concert anymore. No. Like after this, the, you know what I mean? You can raise the bar. I'm trying to up the ante. So you guys kind of take up the whole space? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I love it. Yeah. It's like a family reunion. Yeah. This is good. Thank you. Yeah, from you this know what? I'm going to show y'all one thing that I don't normally show anybody, right? So normally my physical therapy room, just see. so you understand, so okay. this kind of is dubbing for two spaces, right? <clears throat> this is kind of like my health and wellness space. Okay. I got like a cold dip, literally, that I have to go into, you know, just to kind of keep my myself from inflammation. Wait, like an ice bath? Yes, yeah, an ice bath. Is it literally like, yeah. ice? You want to go feel it? Yes. You don't believe me? Wait, Freezing for real, cold. For real. Yeah. I mean, like I'm an like, athlete. I'm a full. I'm a but full I mean, time. like how you perform. Let me see. Oh heck no. Oh no. With the what, what the heck? <laughs> 
Seriously? Yeah. Oh, no. For, like, how long? Uh, it all depends on how bad it is, you know? <laughs> does it really help? Yeah, it does. I found different methods of therapy to really help my body stay in tune. You know, it's like, how am I able to do all the stuff that I, I do? I wonder, quite frankly. A lot of massage. Yeah. You know, a little therapy here, ice therapy, cryotherapy when I'm outside, and I got an infrared sauna right here to sit in. Oh, wow. In. I wondered about that. I mean, the dancing, the energy that it takes. Well, we're moving like athletes. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, similar injuries. It might be a twist of an ankle or, you know, or something that's just out of place yeah. or either a muscle that spasms or something like that if you're not right. having enough water. Remember, we're in the desert, so everybody's encouraged to drink a lot of water. Yeah. yeah. We got this sweating. I think this is important to see because I think people just think y'all just get out there and just like. Oh, we make it look easy. Yeah, huh? you do. You make it look easy. <laughs> no, but this is good. remember when you were on the Today Show not too long ago yeah. and they said, Chanel, you're going to skate with Usher. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I knocked in your dressing room door. I'm like, Usher, yeah. can you roller skate? And you're like, no, it's terrible, I'm right? not that good. <laughs> and then you go out there and you're like, next level. Yeah. Did you grow up skating? I, well, I grew up skating in Chattanooga, Tennessee and then in Atlanta. I think everybody uh, skates there as well. But it's, it's something that we do in the South a lot. But you go to places where you can dance, sing, listen to music, skate. So bringing that culture now forward with flippers as we launched mm -hmm. at Rockefeller Center in New York City. Um, I got a chance to bring a little bit of that in here. I built an entire skating rink inside this um, space, right? And I feel like skating yeah. is coming back, but I feel like when people are here, whether they're from Wichita, whether they're from LA, like once they're here, it's just like they have a moment to just put everything on hold and have a good time. Two trains of thought for me. Okay. One, something that is athletic, that kind of challenges you and there's music. No different than working out in the gym. You listen to music, you pump iron, you run on a treadmill, you're on a bike. So you get a little bit of a sweat and you work out, you know, some of the issues that you may be sure. you know, just holding on to. The other train of thought is we're all kids again. Yeah. You probably more than likely found skating on quads when you were a kid mm -hmm. or rollerblades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It just brings this energy that is all about joy, all about fun all about celebration with your friends, you meet people, you have a good time listening to new music, get motivated by somebody's style, get better at it if you choose to. Yeah. You know. But um, for me, I, I wanted to offer something that um, is just about joy and fun in this time of my life. Look, I've been doing this it. for a long time. And I think we all need something that just brings joy back to us. We've been locked away because of COVID or either restrictions in certain you know, state cities so just to go back and have fun for two seconds, but be in a space where you can, you know, just play some kind of energy and, and, and feel good about yourself. You know, you sweat a little bit, <laughs> but you feel good when you, when you look out there and you see people just having fun. That to me is, is what I love about skating and, and this freedom that I'm having right now to just be creative and just go back to how I did things when I first started. When I decided, 25 years ago that I would do things my way, I said I would have fun. So I'm just having fun. And that's keeping me young. That's keeping me, that's keeping my energy right. 
I'm actually even able to celebrate with my kids. So I'm able mm -hmm. to literally skate with my kids too and That's just share that same joy that I had when I was their age. That's a dream. Yeah, it is. I was just reading, I, didn't, I can't believe it. it's been, it's been 25 years. We're almost at the 25th anniversary yeah. of My Way. She yep. likes it my way. Does it feel like 25 years? No, it doesn't. I was literally 19 years old when I did that album. JD was 25 years wow. old when we, uh, we did that album. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a monumental moment for me. Um, we we're going to do some really incredible things uh, this year with it. We're relaunching the album, and I did a few uh, remixes uh, with, a, with an incredible producer by the name of Ryan Carr. Uh, we remixed Nice and Slow, You Make okay. Me Wanna, and it's going to really be cool. question for okay. you. So when you're on this stage, it seems like these days I have been trying to put my phone down to be present and, you know, I'll capture it for a second, but then I want to see you with my eyes. I want to be where I am. Do you ask people to put their phones down? Like, how do you do that as an artist these days? Typically in a Broadway or either Las Vegas show, you don't bring out your phone, but at a concert you do. Mm -hmm. I welcome people to bring their phones in. Uh, and the work for me is to captivate them so much to the point that they don't want to pick them up. <laughs> and if they do, they're literally like, oh, I don't want to miss something, there's so much going on. Mm. Like, it's like by the time you realize, wait a minute, I'm completely immersed in an experience mm. where it's not about what's being captured here, it's what's being remembered in the moment. And that's really what this was. I, I, I think that we all need to be more present. Mm. I think we all need to, you know, just maybe put the phone down a moment and, and be present with each other and enjoy this incredible gift that we have to be vessels. You know, my creativity is for the purpose of helping people through hard times. You know, being able to sing songs that bring you joy, you know, allow you to have sadness and get over things or get through things. Mm -hmm. uh, we gotta be present in that moment. We should be present at a concert. I Absolutely. think, hopefully, I have under promise and over delivered with this residency. Cheers to that. So on that yeah. note, some artists come and go and they have hits. You've been able to crank out hit after hit, new ventures, you keep evolving. Yep. How do you do it? Pay attention to the wins and remember the losses. Mm. Yeah, pay attention to where you are because when I say pay attention to the win, that's more than likely the moment when you begin to become relaxed and you're like, mm. oh, I got it. No, remember the loss and remember the moment when it was hard. Mm. How do I continue to do it? Man, I collaborate with some incredible writers, some incredible producers, incredible creatives, and we make things that are real. We try to be as present as we can, talk about things that are real, and celebrate life, good 
and bad at times, whether you choose to call it good or bad. Because, you know, when you're talking about a song about heartbreak, you're crying, you're mm -hmm. hurt, but you're learning something. You're living through something. You're learning the process of life. Sometimes you go through something to get to something. And then we celebrate. Mm -hmm. Cool. But music has always assisted us in that way. For every great moment, there's a song to go with it. Mm -hmm. For every sad moment, there's a song that goes with it. So I just, I be that vessel. God made me who I am. He gave me this gift. And I'm going to continue to do it the way that I want to do it. Um, I love it. I love working. it. I told you I do this series, this mom series, where I interview the moms of people that we admire. Yep. So I talked with your mom. And she talked about the passion that you've always had. But she also talked about the work and how much work you put in since you were a little boy. What don't we see as far as the work, even from all those years back to even now? What don't you see? I mean, the, the hours. You know, when you look at this idea of the, the big show, the lights, this thing that we've created in this time, the work that it took to get here, it didn't always look like this. Mm. That's the thing that you didn't get a chance to see. You didn't see, or maybe you haven't chosen to, to look at the fact that it all starts the same. It starts with ambition. It starts mm. with passion. And that's really what has led me. You don't get a chance to see the time that is sacrificed. Uh, away from family. I'm pretty sure there's other kids out there like that, that, you know, are trying to figure out what am I, where am I, what do I like, what do I spend my time focusing on? The more hours you put in focusing on that, the more likely you are to be success. So I always say, um, be committed. And um, it ain't gonna always be pretty. Have you found balance? Have you, are you able to be present with family life? You've got four beautiful kids yeah. and you've got this life. How do you juggle it all? Well, being able to be here in Las Vegas has given me that opportunity to find more balance. As I said, you know, I'm traveling around the world, I'm setting up a stage, I'm tearing it down. So I save a lot of time, money, and there's nothing more important than time. Mm -hmm. Money is what it is, right? Time, you can't get back. So being able to have that time to go with Sire and Sovereign and, and teach them how to swim or either be in the pool with them and help them understand swimming those are genuine moments to pick them up in the morning and laugh, help them, you know, help Navid figure out what he's going to do, you know, with his, uh, you know, his career. He really wants to be an actor. So I'm I was like, going right. to ask you about that. Did you see a creative bug in any of them? I think he loves theatrical things, um, but and he's 13. So he's trying to really figure out exactly which way he wants to go. It's always been like a show kid. He's loved, you know theatrical plays and loves all types of music. But now seeing him act in theatrical plays, I'm like, man, he really does have what it takes. He's just got to really get focused without any pressure, I'm not trying to push him more than he should, but I want to be a supportive dad and encourage him. Maybe I know a thing or two about it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then Usher, Usher being able to be here at, at, um, at basketball camp, being able to see him athletically, you know, really you know, find his thing, you know, find what he wants to do, the position he's going to play, rather he chooses to do that or go in a different direction. But I know that time means a lot to them and it means even more to me to be able to have it. So Las Vegas gave me that opportunity to do this, be creative, but still have my time as a dad. My dad wasn't there for me. Uh, so I'm happy that I'm able to kind of fix all those things that I didn't necessarily have with them.
people loved you on The Voice. Do you like that part of the job, being a mentor to young people or maybe the generation of folks who are coming up behind you? So many people look to you because you've had such a long career. I felt like I was born to do it. Mm. I feel like literally uh, I'm an example. Uh, and I feel like I'm setting an example. Uh, I ain't perfect. None of us are. But what I can use is my experience to be able to help people find their passion and help them stay connected to it. I am the artist that I am. I am the man that I am because of the mentors that I had. Excellent. So, I mean, everybody from Virgil Roberts, who was an attorney and also to, I look at him like a father, you know, mentors and big brothers like Tyler Perry, like Russell Simmons, like L.A. Reid, like Sean Puffy Combs, mm -hmm. like, you know, Jermaine Dupri, uh, like Harry Belafonte, all of these incredible people who are like, handpicked family and people whom I, I have an incredible relationship with because I get honesty from them because they they listen we listen to each other we support each other they actually support me and help me you know understand certain things Terry Lewis I was just talking to him earlier this morning and we just he didn't have to take 30 to 40 minutes to just sit on a call with me and talk but to know that at this point I still have that kind of connection means more than anything. And I feel like you've been reaching out for years. I remember, you know, even Bieber. Like, didn't you help him gazillions of years ago? You saw him, his talent, was it on YouTube? Or what yeah, was it? well, his discovery uh, through me and uh, my partner, Scooter Braun. Yeah, that was the beginning of his career. He's obviously done exceedingly well. Yeah, when you see Bieber now, what, do you, what crosses your mind? It's just love, mm. you know. You know, with all of the noise of this world, to know that you have somebody in something that's still real is important. And I promised uh, him from the beginning that I would try my best to be that. I love that. Yeah. Finally, who do you listen to? Who's on your playlist? Who's on my playlist? Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I could tell you. I've been so immersed in this show. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, but every night there's this uh, party that we do at On The Record, which is right outside, is another immersive experience in addition to this show. Uh, I do a party that kind of that kind of takes you to a different world. My whole thing is always about immersive theatrical experiences, okay. if you haven't noticed. I love it. <laughs> I keep saying it over and over again. Well, it's forward thinking, too. It's not just going, you see a stage, and you're not part of it. I feel like we're part of the you're experience. In it. See, I'm, I'm, I'm here. There you go. There you go. But, yeah, we listen to old school music. Like, in that party, it's like R&B rules. That right there is the energy that I, I always wanted for Las Vegas. I wanted to do or offer something that I didn't think existed here in Las Vegas. This is an opportunity of grounds for me to incubate ideas and be creative and really take like ownership of this place. You know, I look at, you know, what I see. I wasn't a part of it. I only think I was born when the Rat Pack were doing what they were doing. Mm. Right. And now having that opportunity to do something or things similar to what they were doing in that time where they were really celebrating. Those guys came together and they celebrated. So I'm out here with my guys, we partying, having a good time, doing shows, laughing, doing comedy. Me and T.I. out here, Kevin Hart, you know, Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, Jamie Foxx. Usher, this is epic. Yeah, like, do you hear yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just a dream. This is a whole new Vegas. I'm, I'm like a different type of ambassador, you know what I'm saying? And giving you authenticity and, and pieces here, glimpses of what has happened or what you get from Atlanta, but you're getting it in Las Vegas, running it out here, making sure we keep it steady and fun and authentic, you know what I'm saying? What do you want your fans to walk away with when they see this show, this oh, residency? Man. Get ready. Get ready because there's more to come. You know, even though you're looking at this, this is really a celebration of the past. But now, we're here in the present. In the future, if you enjoyed this, Way to get a load of what's happening next. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm okay. home, baby. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
Savannah, you got to catch up with one of probably your most favorite people, Miss mm. Kristen Chenoweth. Oh, she's a legend. You yeah. know, she was just down the street. She met us at historic St. Patrick's Cathedral. Honestly, we could have talked for hours. Kristen, of course, needs no introduction. She's a Tony and Emmy winner and has transformed Broadway with her starring roles in Wicked and You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Well, she credits God and her faith with helping her get to the main stage. And as a Christian, she believes it's her mission to share God's love. And whether that is on the Broadway stage or walking down the streets of New York, she's finding a different kind of voice. I can't believe we're here. Can you believe we're here? You got your start singing in church. I did. Not a church like this one, though. Oh, no, no. Uh, mine was in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and it only had about 1,000 people in, in membership. But God was a huge part of my life. How I found my gift was through church music. What does it feel like to sing a great hymn, like How Great Thou Art, and be able to sing it like you? I feel, <laughs> thank you so much, you make me cry. It's, it gets me back to my roots. Whenever I sing, you mentioned Great Is Thy Faithfulness earlier, and I, Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, I just, the echo. Morning by morning, morning new, new mercies I see. Take my mic down. <laughs> Never. You have a song in your heart, and you should sing it. Maybe not as loud as me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not as loud as you. I'll lip sync. Would you say you first found your voice in yeah. church? I was in the choir, little kids' choir, and my, they were having an audition for an adult solo. And my mom said, you can't, you're a kid. I said, let me just go try out. You know, that says a lot about me at that age. So I went and I got the solo. They were like, we're going to give it to you. And then that Sunday I sing the solo and the church erupts. And I say this story only to tell you that when you're a little kid and the encouragement you get from people that love mm -hmm. you to follow the passion that you love, I was given an opportunity to sing about something that I believe in, which is faith. Mm -hmm and do it in front of people who love me, a very safe space. It started the ball rolling. And I love to sing for all kinds of faiths because I believe that we, we worship a God that is loving, not one that is man has made. So you're going to hell mm. and a loving God. And if I can spread that joy, then I'm gonna try because that was one of the things God told me when I was a little girl. People go, oh, he actually, he spoke, hey, Chris, you know? Yeah. I get these impressions on my heart. I don't know how else to explain it. It's a still, small voice. And when I get that impression, it's like a handprint, like, yes, that's correct. It's interesting about God's voice because um, it's hard to describe, although actually I think you describe it really well. Thank you. But I often find it is saying something that is unexpected. Yes, yes. I remember Savannah even talking about my adoption. And I've just started talking about it recently because, because I got the impression in my heart, this will help other people. People need to know that you just weren't in, in this world magically. They need to know what was behind it. It will inspire people. And so it's become a lot more easier for me to talk about, but if I couldn't listen, I would have kept that secret, and I'm not ashamed of it. Kristen was adopted as a newborn. Her adoptive mother happened to be in the hospital the same day she was born for an operation that would leave her unable to conceive. By chance or heavenly plan, Kristen unexpectedly became available for adoption. She said to the doctor, I always wanted to try for a little girl and now I won't be able to. And he remembered that story. So when my birth mom, Mama Loon, came to give birth, she, they called my dad before and said, do you want to surprise Junie tomorrow? Because I've got a little baby here that's going to need a home. And my dad said, yeah. And so they kind of took my mom, robed her up and day of her surgery and took her down to the babies. And they said, see that baby? That's your baby. So she's waiting on you when you get done. And so we went home together. And she said, I always felt like I had you because we went home together. And I mean, how can I, me personally, not believe in miracles? Mm. I got the perfect family. I was brought into this world by the wonderful mother, Mama Lynn, and I was able to get an education. I grew up in a loving, giving family, one full of faith and a lot of fun too. Mm. And 
you know, it's a gift. It's a gift. So that's a miracle. But how does Mama Lynn, did she sing? Yes. Okay. And the, my birth father was a great musician as well, mm -hmm. Billy Etheridge. And some people might know who he is out there, but so I know where it came from. Mm -hmm. And she's petite. I got her height. People say nature versus nur mm -hmm. nurture. I think no, nature and nurture mm -hmm. is what it is. It's such a beautiful alchemy, this story. You know, it's yeah. like this magic. It's divine. It's divine. It's divine. You've had ups and downs in your career. You've talked about how you've looked for God's voice yeah. to guide you. Yeah. How has that helped you make decisions that might have been a little surprising at the time, or a little yeah. unorthodox or off the beaten path? It's been really interesting because I have a a wonderful team that works for me to help me guide with these decisions. Even when I was younger, I was lucky enough to get a great agent. I went to New York with my friend Denny to help him audition and get settled in. And I thought, maybe I'll just try out for something for fun, have the experience. And I ended up getting this part. And I had a big decision to make. And this is where I talk about the gut. This is where I talk about that impression. Some people call it the universe. That's fine. For me, it's the Lord. But I have to get quiet. My whole life I've heard from my aunts and my mom, two ears, one mouth, Kristen. Two ears, one mouth. <laughs> Speak less and listen more, because you know I can talk. <laughs> and when I do that, I'm able to kind of hear what God wants from me. And I went to New York. I said, I'm gonna do this thing, and it worked out. So God has other plans sometimes, and it's happened several times in my career. But faith is a journey, and not always an easy one. Along with great success, Kristen has had great setbacks, including an onset accident that nearly killed her a decade ago. Severely injured, the road back was a crucible. It was horrific and scary and awful. Now, I could go in the path of bitterness and anger, and I did for a while, I did. But I could let all that go. It happened. So guess what I'm gonna choose? That way. And a lot of it is up to us. He gave us a mind and for me to just, I don't guess I'm preaching, but for me to talk about that, that'll be something I really want people to know. Have you ever had doubt, seasons of doubt or disconnection with God? Yes. The big question of why God me? Yeah. Why me, God? I've had several injuries. You know, I'm in a, I'd like to say I'm an athlete. All my Broadway people know what I mean. People that tour, they know what I mean. I asked my mom one day, this was after this accident. I had to kind of relearn how to get some of my sentences out, land the plane, so to speak. I, my physical physical body is not the same as it was. And I had a big pity party. And they, were, they stayed with me for three months to help me walk and things. She said, why not you? I said, what do you mean? Like, I'm crying. She goes, of course, do I want this for my daughter? No, but why not you? You know better or worse than anybody else. Things happen to everybody. 
you're on a mission to spread the love of God. I mean, that's it. Wait, that's you know, but also when you do fall and you mess up and we all have, you get this amazing gift, which is God's grace. It's an incredibly bonding experience with God. When you know you did something wrong and you feel that on your heart, you are forgiven. I mean, you're so right to bring that up, grace. Growing up, my mom always said, Junie, channel with I love you. She said, uh, if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's but hard. It's hard. And it's later in life because I'm a Leo and I'm very loyal and I expect it back by people that love me. And when I've been hurt in the past, I have held on to it and it has hurt me. So just recently, and this is a, a fact, I've started forgiving people that I feel have hurt me that don't even care anymore or know about it because <laughs> I'm the one that's hurting and that's God's grace. He says, see my child, if you'd done this the whole time, you wouldn't have carried that, that on your journey. I think that's so unique to God's character, if you will. When he tells us something, even something we don't really want to do, like forgive someone who hurt you. Yeah. He's not doing it for them. He's doing it for you. Yeah, it's true. And I've had trouble, more trouble, Savannah, learning to forgive myself mm. when I have disappointed others, disappointed myself. Mm. I'm very hard on myself. Type A, your average nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? Learning to forgive yourself is the most important so that you can move forward. At my church, the pastor says, one way to define sin is just the way we fall short of love. Oh my gosh, say that again? Sin is just the way that we fall short of love. And I think that's a more accurate way to describe it yes. and more matches up with what, you know, what God intends. I agree, I so agree. I love that, I'm gonna remember that in my head because it is all about love, isn't it? Yeah. We don't have these conversations all that much. Not anymore. And there's a way to talk about it, I think, in love and openness without judgment or some kind of, I don't know. Cutting think, off? Yeah. Closing down the wall? And you know what it comes down to? We're all God's children. I know. Everybody gets in on it. It's, it's, I think if we thought about that more, it would be transforming. Then we really would be look at each other as brother and sister instead yes. of the enemy. In this family together. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what God wants us to do. Too, Savannah. On this road. So on this day, Kristen Chenoweth, who God gave the voice of an angel, raised hers loud and strong, and we were blessed.
Looks I've never done this behind a bar. I know you look, you're slinging it pretty well. Thank you. Yeah. I like a little bit of a kick, put some tahini on the rim. I know it's early, but whatever. Here you go, Willie. Aaron, thank you so much. I'm honored. Cheers. Cheers. A toast to the end of a tour where Marin Morris sold out venues across the country and mixed up her famous margaritas on the bus. Yeah, I'm just not ready for it to be over. I wish we had done more shows. <laughs> Maybe we can add a few at the end. Yeah. Welcome we'll here and now. For fun. I'll, go, I'll go busk in the street. <laughs> yeah. I bet you would, actually. You've, uh, done, yeah. you've done it before. I'll open the guitar case. The tour shares a name with her latest album called Humble Quest. What does Humble Quest mean to you? I think from 2020 on uh, to now, I've learned a lot about myself because my tour got canceled. I lost my producer, Busby, in late 2019. And so just everything was really humbling. I think just about being a human. It's like you are not in control. You never were. It was strange for all of us, but I have to imagine for someone who's been on the road for, what, 15 years or something like that, doing shows, grinding, hustling the whole time to just hit the brakes for two years. It was probably disorienting to you in some way. Your husband too, because he's a performer as well. I think the bottom fell out in many ways for me. And I've sort of learned through therapy that I have been doing this hustle since I was 10 or 11 years old. I'm 32. I haven't stopped. It took the world coming to a halt for me to stop. Marin's son Hayes was born in March of 2020 in those first days of the pandemic. I think a lot of identity crises <laughs> happened there, not just like being a new parent and a new mother and dealing with, you know, postpartum depression for the first time and reeling from that and trying to like find the forest through the trees, but also just knowing my worth without someone clapping for me. I kind of felt like this sounds so cheesy, but I, I felt like a woman, like the, the, the sort of form I was supposed to take a long time ago that I've been in arrested development over, it finally came because I had to stop doing this thing that always gave me this um, pride. So how did that manifest itself? What did it mean to you to become a woman, as you say? I think that I'm a child still in a lot of ways that I haven't properly matured uh, because I've always been able to throw it into music. But as far as relationships go, I think from a very early age, I've been taking care of myself and other people and just performing. And um, yeah, I think when you have your own kid and you, you kind of can't go to work, your purpose is very different. And so you kind of have to just like ch chisel it out of stone yourself. And I think I was probably supposed to do that a long time ago, but it just didn't happen until now. Don't know why, don't know why I let you, but I do. Cause I love chasing after you. She spent the time at home reflecting and writing songs with her husband, Ryan Hurd, a fellow singer-songwriter. As far as being creative with him goes, it was like, can we just please write something light to pull me out of this like pandemic doldrum and I don't want to you know sit in the ashes very long here so he kind of just helped me in song form and in just conversation form figure out how to get to the, the light I drove circles around this town trying to ride circles around this town trying to say something with me and something we're singing about she began to find that light by reaching back to her early days in Nashville, long before she was a Grammy-winning chart-topping star. Circles Around This Town stands out among other great songs. What is the message of that song? What are you saying? Well, the, the line that I love is, I thought when I had hit it, it all looked different, but I've still got the pedal down, driving circles around this town. And that to me was like, I moved to Nashville 10 years ago with nothing. And I really had to build myself up and build my song repertoire just from scratch. And I think I still have that grind in me that is like your best song is the last one you wrote. So you always are trying to one up yourself. And that's the beautiful competition 
art form that is Nashville songwriting is like all your friends are better than you. Mm. And it just, it doesn't make you downtrodden. It makes you excited to show them the last thing you wrote. So that community there is really special to me because I feel like they hold me accountable. They also make me a better writer every single time I go back into the room. Yeah, isn't it interesting? I found this too, where you think in the course of your career, there's going to be some moment where you go, I did it. And you put your feet up. But if you have the motor that people like you and I probably both have, yeah. you never put your feet up, right? Yeah, I mean, Ryan, my husband jokes that uh, he'll be wheeling me off the casino <laughs> stage <laughs> when we're like, I'm 90 or something. That's going to be my fate. It's like, I'll probably just die on stage. <laughs> Um, because I love it so much. I don't want to take time off. I don't like the idea of saving up a bunch and retiring because it's not a job to me. It's, it's like my passion. up on the honky-tonk circuit in her home state of Texas, Morris spent her early years in Nashville writing songs for other people, but it was the one she kept for herself that changed her life. Yeah, I guess that's my, church. my Church was a coming out party for Morris, and the hits have been coming ever since. I'm a 90s baby in my 80s Mercedes. Including two number one singles. Off of her second album, Girl. And of course, the relentlessly popular song, The Middle, where she sang lead vocals with Gray and Zed. Did you have any sense when you put that song out that it was going to become this? massive hit number one and change your life in the way that it did? I think it just opened up a huge world audience to my voice. And so if anyone ever heard that like, baby, they'd be like, who is this? Oh, Maren Morris, who's that? And then, you know, they would go to my previous work. So why don't you just meet me in the middle, middle, in the middle, middle? When you sit down to write any new album now, do you think about hits at this point? Are you just trying to write great songs? I think a hit for me at this point is just a byproduct of hopefully a great song. I can't go in and create with that formula in my head of what I think a hit will be because then you end up following a trend that someone has already set. Um, and I think that you want it to be the opposite of that. You want to set it and create something that's new, or if it is reminiscent or nostalgic of something else, it's done in a way that's really fresh. And um, so yeah, it's at this point, I, I've had crossover success. I've had songs on pop radio, on hot AC, on country. I'll always take it when it comes, but I don't go in and set out to 
be the hit maker. I just want to write a great song and I want to connect with my friends that I'm writing it with and connect to a higher self or God or whatever it is in that room. That's what I'm there to do. I hesitated to use the term crossover, but since you used it, yeah. what does that mean to you exactly? Because it seems to me that genre doesn't really matter as much anymore. Yeah. If you're good, you're good, and people find it wherever it is. Everything has gone over to streaming, and um, people are just pulling up playlists based on mood, yeah. uh, which I love. That's kind of how I search for things. But respecting and staying true to a root of what made you fall in love with a genre in the first place is important, but um, I, it's not my Bible. Uh, I think that I am so influenced by so many genres and I've never said otherwise. Like from my church on, it's always been the kitchen sink. Success in music has given Morris a voice outside of it too. She has been outspoken on social issues from abortion rights and gun control to the need for diversity in country music and defending trans youth. You use your voice and your platform to speak out on issues. When you started to do that, was there any trepidation of, I'm about to step in it, and now I'm going to be in the middle of it? Yeah, I think it's gotten more galvanized since I've had my son that I am really trying to make something beyond music, and I want people to look around at my shows and realize okay, this is really loving and safe and comfortable. Like no matter what walk of life or where you come from, I want you to be able to be safe at my show. And I'm willing to be uncomfortable to do that. Is there a risk to it? Because I would say I'm a fan of country music. Most artists aren't gonna sit down in an interview and talk about the things you talk about or to even go on social media and take on those issues because they say, maybe I believe that, maybe I do feel that way. It's just not worth the fight. It's not worth losing fans. Do you feel any hit from doing that? I mean, Honestly, like when I put my church out, I, I kind of got my first dose of criticism of people saying the song is like blasphemous at my church. And I remember, you know, oh, wow, I'm really going to have to have some thick skin to get through this if this is like the song that's already pissing people off in a very weird way. So I think from the get-go, I've gone through the chapters of um, feeling just the, the criticism and knowing that, you know what? You're gonna piss people off either way, so you better let them know where you stand. And I think that, yeah, I've probably lost listeners along the way, um, but I think the ones I've gained and the ones I've retained, they know exactly who I am and what they're getting. And I see the residual effect of it now that time has passed of the positivity that it's ingrained into the, the fan base. Um, so even if you take a hit here and then, you know, here and there, it's, it's, uh, it's worth it. With the Humble Quest tour now wrapped, it seems Morris has a new itch. I want to do Broadway. You do? Yeah. I've really tried to just scare myself the last few years. I like hosted a late night show, had never done that. Yeah. I flew with the Air Force Thunderbirds in like a fighter jet. <laughs> I'm talking to you. I'm just kidding. Um, That's an adventure. Yeah. Living her life with some spice and a kick. That is delicious, truly. Not just because you made it. Thank you for giving Cheers. me a bar to do it in. <laughs> Cheers again. Cheers. Thank you.
the best player in the band? Nate. Whether holding a guitar or a ping pong paddle, Marcus Mumford can play. We used to take a table on tour. I should be much better than that. Very backspinny. A lot of backspin Ooh. going on. Oh. At the moment, the Mumford & Sons frontman is out on the road without his bandmates, touring behind his debut solo album, Self-Titled. It's a proper album in the way mm. we don't see them anymore, which is you've got to listen to the whole thing from 1 to 10 to hear the full story. Yeah, me and Beyonce trying to there keep, you go. keep the album fires burning. What made you want to sit down, step away from Mumford for a bit, and tell this story? I didn't think of it. I wasn't intentional about it at the beginning. I just wanted to write songs again. The first two songs that came out were Cannibal and Grace, which are the first two songs on the record. And as soon as I'd written them, I showed them to the guys in the band. I said, I don't know if this is a band record. I don't know if it's even a record yet, but it feels like something I maybe should do on my own. And they all completely agreed and supported it. So then the songs just started rolling one after the other. I spent about 18 months writing and recording. Um, enlisted more support than I've ever had for anything I've done. So it's weird that it's called the solo record. It's the most collaborative piece of music I've ever worked on. And and yeah, the, the songs really led it. I was determined to follow the creative where it led. The album opens with Cannibal, Mumford's deeply personal and painful song about the sexual abuse he suffered as a child. But when I began to tell, it became the hardest thing I ever said out loud. So weird with songs because you take the most private things that yeah. you have and that moment of artist behavior where you write a song about something really personal and then you do the most public thing you could do with it and you go and publicize it play it to people and you it goes on the radio or whatever it it's just a really weird thing that we do as artists but i sort of refused to call it a record until i had all the songs because i just didn't want to think about releasing it until i knew there was something there to release and then i figured i'd think about that stuff later so really I didn't even call it an album until late last year. And then this year started thinking about how to present it to people. And at that point I started thinking, oh, I'm going to have to talk about this. I'm going to have to. And, and seeing that more as an opportunity than some sort of punishment is how I've approached it. And it feels good. I feel kind of free and happy and kind of fulfilled by, by doing the process. Was it a difficult decision or it sounds like it wasn't really a decision? It wasn't really a decision. No, once I'd written it, I, you know, just became part of the collection of songs along with the other nine on the record. Um, and then early this year, I started thinking, okay, this is gonna be put out somehow. I know a lot of people have stepped out and said, oh my gosh, he's telling my story, I can tell mine, things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's the reason I called it self-titled rather than using my name. Because I love the idea that other people might be able to access parts of my mm -hmm. story and project their own onto it or feel something from their own story in mine, which is really cool. Uh, it's sort of the magic of music, I think. After Cannibal comes Grace, a song that recounts the experience of Mumford telling his mother about the abuse only recently. I thought I'd, I'd talk my mum through that stuff, and I hadn't. So when I played her Cannibal was the first time she kind of clocked it. Wow. And so I wrote Grace, like, the first lyric is, well, how should we proceed without things getting too heavy? And that sort of acts, I think, as an invitation for the audience to join me on what I think becomes a story about freedom and recovery and has a lot of hope in it. I'm a, I'm a Beyonce guy. She always talks about leaving people with hope, you yes. know? And that's true, I think, on every song on the record. The first song ends with beginning again, and, um, and then it kind of goes on from there. The album closes with a song about forgiveness, co-written by Mumford's friend, yeah, Grammy winner yeah. Brandi Carlile. Release you from all of the blame I know how. The first lyric in the first song is, if I could forgive you. And the last one is, I will. And it's a statement of intent. It's not necessarily saying forgiveness is done and dusted. I think it's more of a process, like a left foot, right foot thing. Like, I'm going to choose to do this now. Did you feel like you needed to forgive yourself for something? Oh, yeah, for tons of stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. From a really early age, had things hidden in my life, and they would cascade into other hidden things and it just you get tangled up in it all and so unpicking that and forgiving yourself for that stuff i think is an important part of kind of recovery have you found forgiveness not just for yourself but beyond uh is that last song true 
Well, I think I certainly find myself in a, I, I think with more access to compassion for people who behave in ways that seem like abhorrent or heinous to me. And behind like all these stories and certainly my own of like bad behaviors or behaviors that really affect other people in negative ways, there's normally a story underneath that. And so I think I'm able to not just see the way someone presents, but think, and I wouldn't project a story onto them, but think like, you've got a bunch of stuff going on in your life. And it seems by the way you're presenting to me that you haven't had the opportunity to look at that stuff. So I, instead of just writing someone off completely and saying like, you're not a person I want to ever associate with, which is that there's a lot of that in our culture at the moment. Yes. And I get it uh, completely. But the fact that it's more complicated than just one single narrative, nor, normally there's layers of narratives there. I think I've got more access to compassion, maybe, than I did before. Self-titled is dedicated to Mumford's wife, the Oscar-nominated actress Carrie Mulligan. The pair have been married since 2012 and have two young children. You know, I think Yoko gave creative partners like sometimes a bit of a bad rep. There was one day actually we were at the studio and Carrie was showing up and she was driving and they had like these really fancy little placards to, to put in front of your parking spots. So like one saying Marcus Mumford on it and I parked there and she called me and she's like, where do I park? I said, there's a slot allocated for you. And when she showed up, I'd got them to print a Yoko sign and put it in her parking spot, which I was thrilled about. She's like, good gag, babe. She liked it. Uh, she liked yeah. it. Um, but I wouldn't have made it without her. There's good reason that it's dedicated to her. And she's been phenomenally supportive all the way. It's cool. Born in California to parents who were leaders in their church, Mumford moved with the family back to London at six months old. His prodigious talent for music was born in the kitchen. Do you remember, Marcus, when the spark was lit for you in terms of music? The kitchen in my household growing up was the place where we'd listen to the most music outside of the car. My mum's an amazing chef. She would be in the kitchen, make stuff, and I would sit on the floor, listen to music. And I remember pulling out pots and pans really? because I started on the drums. 
And then, yeah, listening to music with my mum in the kitchen. She had a vinyl player, so I put on House of the Rising Sun by the Animals oh. and um, Slow Train Coming. She had those records. Good taste. And then Talis, a lot of vocal music. Wow. She was a kind of singer uh, in a choir. And you'd so, offer a little percussion. A little it. percussion, some harmonies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then at what point did you say, I know you left college to pursue this. At what point did you say, this is something I really want to go after? I How's still have, I, in my head, I still haven't said that. I'm still a semi-professional <laughs> in my head. I'm still going back to college at some point. Um, yeah, I left college on a sabbatical because yeah. I got offered a job playing drums with Laura Marling. And I went and did that. And during the course of that year, we set up the band. Yeah, and jumped up at the end of her shows and played a song or two. And then the first tour of the States we did, we were, half of us were her backing band. And Wynn and Ben slept in the back lounge on the bus because there weren't enough bunks for us all. And, and then from there on, she really gave us the leg up to play our own shows. And we went from there. Mumford has spent more than a decade performing in arenas around the world with Mumford & Sons, the band he formed with friends in 2007. Their debut album, Sigh No More, was released in the U.S. in 2010, climbing to number two on the Billboard chart while selling more than three million copies and earning the band a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist. We did theaters once, and I think normally you'd do like two or three theater runs and then move up to the bigger rooms. And it just went, we climbed that ladder fast, I think. We were talking earlier today um, about a performance that grabbed a lot of people, which was at the Grammys in 2011. I was watching again this morning, the way you all are stomping on that riser, and then the horns come in, and you yep. have this look about two minutes in of just complete joy. <laughs> Almost like, can you believe where we are, boys? Mm. Do you remember that night well? Because yeah, obviously things changed for you after that. Yeah, Bob Dylan said to me during, because that was the one we did with Dylan and the Avit brothers. And Dylan, pretty much the only thing he said to me during rehearsals was keep that boot going, because I was stomping. Yeah. And, and I've, I've considered that a mantra. <laughs> It's led to a lot of four on the floor songs. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think and it was funny because after we played our song, the Avits played their song, we went behind the curtain to get ready to all come on to play Maggie's Farm with Dylan. And I think it was probably when the live broadcast was happening to however many tens of millions of people, I think it was the first time he'd heard our music. But he kind of liked it. And we came back while the Avits were playing and he walked over to me and he went, play that again. And I still had my guitar in my hands. And I was like really quietly, because we're behind the curtain, the Avits are right there. I start playing him the cave and he goes, I can sing on that. Let's do Maggie's Farm to that. And we've been practicing for three days. We were all like, what are you talking, what do you mean? But you're Bob Dylan, we'll do whatever you tell us to do. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna sing it on that. And then his bass player Tony came over and was like, Bob, we're not doing that. Practiced. This. We're literally walking on stage in 30 seconds. Is that an so. out-of-body experience that Bob Dylan is leaning in and giving yeah, you notes? Like, oh, Let's like jam yeah, this way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, totally. But one I'll never forget. You know. I know my weakness, know my voice. Mumford and Son's next two albums debuted at number one, making the band a foot-stomping international sensation that fans will be happy to hear is just on a break. The band isn't broken up. I also see it as like hopefully one in very many records I make throughout my career. A new way of making music on his own, giving Mumford a new perspective too. I think I've taken myself slightly less seriously, which helps. And I know it's just a period of time in my life and I'll go back to the band next and I'm really excited about that. But for now, I'm just trying to enjoy this, this period. And I Oh, yeah. Just tee that I'm one done. for you. I'm done.
My nail tech knows how to keep it a little secret. At 24, Jack Harlow is a leader in rap's latest generation. His clever lyrics, rhythm-driven flow, and viral moment-making charm Love you. Bye. Love you. <laughs> have found him a massive following on social media. She brought a buddy in. What you studying? And Education. in real life. I think I'm coming in at a time where rap has gotten like very street again. I think I'm blessed to like have a spot right now because it's not a time where like it's like, yeah, let's let a, as many white boys in as we can. People are looking for authenticity. So how close is this to home? It's not far off. It's, I think That's people relate to it though. A lot of the fans after the show they talk to me and they're like, my garage looked just like that. Yeah. That meant so much to me. Yeah. Harlow currently is touring the country with his latest album, Come Home the Kids Miss You. That title is a nod to his desire to get back to his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky after a dizzying rise to fame. I was spending so much time away from Kentucky that uh Something was calling me back and continues to. I recorded most of the album outside of Kentucky. And it also was kind of an inside joke that um, I'd see my fans commenting it under everything. They would say it on some like distant wife energy. So <laughs> it's something that just felt appropriate for the time. Yeah. It became like, I just like titles that like signify an era. Mm -hmm. So speaking of, of where you are with the title of the album, you have exploded in the last couple of years in popularity and fame and success and all those measurables. How have you kept your head about you? I'd like to think the company I keep maybe. It's a lot of my day ones and team strong. I feel like a lot of people around me have like strong integrity. On a day to day basis, they start to rub off on you. And a lot of my homeboys will still, still tell me exactly what they think or, you know, make fun of me. You know what I mean? It's not some weird hierarchy that makes me feel like I'm in a strange position. What about your family? They keep you grounded too? Yeah, definitely. They make it clear to me all the time that they like care about my happiness before anything. You know, you have a party, or maybe you'll have some people over. You have this moment where you're like, you know, all these people might not be here if I wasn't in the position I was in in life. Maybe they wouldn't be smiling as hard or maybe they wouldn't laugh as hard at every joke I'm making. And then so you start to account for everyone in your life that you feel like would be no matter what. Check this out. I'm from the, and I the son of small business owners, Harlow was raised in a home that was a little bit country, a little bit hip hop, with a mother who listened to Drake, Eminem, and Kanye West. So how early do you remember listening to hip hop with your mom? I always say my um, earliest memories when she went and bought Late Registration by Ye on disc. I played it in the car and she was like, you can't, you can hear this, but you can't say a lot of these words you're about to hear. So I just remember listening to Late Registration in the car with her. It's definitely a, a key moment for me. She had a huge CD collection that I would sift through on my own, you know, without even being handed anything and just be like, oh, let me listen to this. So definitely had my like, dusting off the vinyl moments because of her. But your dad's a country guy, right? Yeah. So you got these two influences. Yeah. Does that side show up in your I music think so. at all? I yeah. think the storytelling, which is in both genres, but like the vibrato, <laughs> he likes to sing. He sang at their wedding. He sang Suspicious Minds by Elvis. So yeah. he, um, my dad's soulful, you know? So I definitely inherited some of that. And yeah, I love country. I don't know if I'd, I would make country, but there's like a lot of the emotion and storytelling and just the yearning I love about it. Got the girls like OMG, skaters like totally stand out geek, acting like you didn't notice me. Going by Mr. Harlow, Jack first showed promise with the mic in middle school, where he sold homemade mixtapes for $2 a pop. So your, your parents talk about when you were young with the Guitar Hero mic, you're in your room writing rhymes, you're 12 yeah. years old. Is that about when you remember catching the bug of I think hip hop's my thing? 
hip hop wasn't like a niche genre by the time I was a teen. Right. It was everything. It was influencing the way we were dressing. Even as white kids, it was just like, it was the it. It was culture, period. So it's what you grow up in. It's like the kids that decided to go make a band are the ones that were doing something niche. So beyond the mixtapes that were very popular, what's the moment where you said, okay, now I know I can do this for a career? Of course there's like affirming moments, but like I can't pinpoint a time where I was like unsure, mm. which is strange. But I think day after day, your self image is like, duh. Slowly you shape your reality into exactly what you expect for yourself. And of course there's bumps along the way to discourage you. It's tons of imposter syndrome for me. Really? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a black genre and I was white, so it's just, I am white. <laughs> so, you know, so many of your peers come from a different background and have different stories and you sit, you feel like, you have moments where you feel like an outsider. So how did you get over that? How did you make that leap to feeling like you, yes, I should be here with these guys? You know, there's like those moments where you're in your head and then there's moments where you're out. And I think I was lucky enough to spend more time out of it. Not saying, I wonder how they're taking me. And more like, they f with me. You know, I'm good. I belong. What's it like to walk out here, just wall to wall, floor to ceiling, people screaming and giving it all back to you? It's a high. On the right night, it's a complete reminder why I chase this. It's totally euphoric. The ones that hate me the most are just like me. It has been two years of highs for Jack Harlow. Back with the Remus, these the hip hop artist like who exploded onto and the and scene in 2020. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. With the multi-platinum hit, What's Poppin'? My track record's so clean, they couldn't wait to just bash me. Then came a feature on the Lil Nas X hit, Industry Baby. I told you long ago. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I am. Followed this year by First Class, Harlow's first song to go to number one, with some help from an irresistible sample of Fergie's Glamorous. I'm as proud of First Class as any song, and it's not, it's not because of how big it is either, it's because of what it is. And what is it to you? It's just full circle. Anytime you can work your own personal DNA into your artistry. Hip hop artists have been doing it for years. They sample whatever their parents were playing in the house or they sample something they loved when they were six. But what's beautiful is there's kids right now that think that's the song and they hear glamorous and they're like, oh, is that a remix of yeah. First Class? Or, you know what I mean? So it's bringing it to a new generation. Fair to say that is a song that changed your life? Yeah, I would say so. Anytime you can get a song that just translates and touches that everyone knows, children know, you know, older people know, everyone knows. It's like, it does something to your career in that moment. And it's crazy because it's such a commercial record, 
But it's so full circle for me because I was paying homage when I did it, which is one of the pillars of hip hop is just sampling. It was like, we created this from the ground up. Me and my producers, I chose that song that I grew up on. And I was like, let's make something of this. So it's rare, I think, that people, sometimes people's biggest commercial moments might not resonate in their heart. Mm. Even though it's success and they're grateful for it, it might not hit their heart like, mm. And I think people would be surprised. I know that first class is like soulful to me at least. You had a lot of influences growing up. I think that wouldn't be the first one most people would pick for you to come out with your big hit song, right? That's right. And that's what you want. You want something that's like, oh. Because I think when it came out, everyone was kind of like, damn, how's nobody done that? Mm. And that's what you want. You want one of those like, oh. You want, you want your peers to be like, oh, why didn't I think of that? So now that you decide that's the sample, what's your writing process? Yeah, well, it was like sort of a theme throughout the album is conversing with the sample. So not just letting the sample be in the background or talking over it, but rather like playing off of it. Like even my intro, Talk of the Town, we sample Destiny's Child and I'm talking to the sample. So it became a theme throughout the album, I think. And then for the verses, I think we hit the nail on the head with the hook so hard. It just was so like, there's something obvious about it. Like, yeah, this is very easy to attach to. For the verses, I just wanted to rap mm. and say a few things that might even be polarizing. Like certain lines that people were like, why would he say that? But it's like, that's the balance. It's curation. Like anyone had the opportunity to sample Glamorous. Everyone is al allowed to do that. It's like, when you choose to do it in the timing, like it's up to you. And shorty like, you know that boy Jack is going places. I know. But his sights are set on more than music with an upcoming acting debut in a remake of the 1992 movie, White Men Can't Jump. You mean play basketball? Stepping into the role made famous by Woody Harrelson. How'd you play? Oh, the cameras will tell you I did well. <laughs> they only use it in the good takes, I'll tell you That's that. That's good. Ah! And while he seemingly is everywhere these days, Harlow still is most at home on stage. Having the garage, the lights, the smoke, the lasers, it's all fire. I would have an empty stage and I'd perform with a white tee and shorts on. If the crowd is perfect, nothing else matters. Last time you were in Boston, you're in a little bar trying to scare up 100 people. Yeah. Right now there are people sleeping on the sidewalk to get in tonight. There's so many levels you can reach, right? But truth be told, like when I look out, I'm like, this is really all you need to sell out a room means the world like so many people don't get a chance to feel this when you look ahead what do you see i think i still have a lot to prove in the music space i think i've had like some amazing commercial success but i think there's still stories and like art i want to make that i haven't made i think i still have to prove myself a little bit which is exciting i think that's how you want to feel and that's how you stay hungry so as my image and brand like continues to grow and people recognize me in the street whether they listen to my music or not. I really want to make sure that um, I leave behind the mark I want to leave on music and, and be a true storyteller and have music I'm really proud of that I can look back on and say, man, this helped someone. Mm. So I still have steps I want to take as just an artist. So I'm hungry. But in terms of trajectory, like, we're gunning for the top.
know what? I would love for you to join me. Uh-huh. You should. <laughs> Four months ago to the day, Janet Jackson invited this girl from Wichita, Kansas to be her backup dancer on tour. Well, you didn't have to ask me twice. I am hours away from hitting that stage and living my best life. That's right, I am on center stage at the Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida. Oh baby, it's Janet. For Janet's opening weekend of her Together Again tour, her first major tour in four years. When fans from all over the country and different cities come to see the show, what do you want them to feel? Joy, just complete bliss, excitement. I want them to reminisce about great times in their lives when this song comes on, that song comes on, just happiness. And not to be corny, but it's been such a long time since I've been with the fans, so this is, this is for them. On that note, how do you feel, especially with the tour like this? Is it exciting? Is it challenging? Is it exhilarating? Maybe all of it? It's all of that. It really is, especially getting the show together. I love production rehearsals. When the stage is up and we get to do the wardrobe changes and really, really dig into it, and I didn't get as many days as I would have loved to have, so we did like one full dress rehearsal literally the day before the, the day before the show and they worked out fine and then they went to finish for the for last night's show i was just about to ask you janet what is it about being on stage and performing that you love i enjoy it i enjoy dancing i enjoy performing for the fans i enjoy just sharing what i've created i love putting a show together creating it with gil gil dual de Lau, and it just gives me so much joy and to say look look at what we've created and i hope that mm. they enjoy it knowing that i like it and i love performing it hope they enjoy it watching it you have so many you know songs that fans love but is there any song in particular that I guess when you look out into the crowd and they're singing it back to you, that you feel most connected to them? Oh my gosh, there's a, it's a couple of times in the show that it happens, but I think one of, one of the nicest moments for me is uh, when, I, when I, I do again and um, when they sing it to me. Mm. And I, I love that, I can hear them. And, and that sounds so beautiful to me, them knowing that melody, thinking, oh my God, how many years ago was it mm. that, that I, I, I wrote that song? And, and just listening to them, and a melody that you've come up with, and lyrics that you've come up with, that you've created, and, and having this group of people just singing it back to you. you know, I, 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 I love that. It, it's just, it's beautiful. Is there anything that you do uh, before you hit the stage you know, when you perform or a ritual, or is there anything that you say to yourself? Or? Always pray. We, as a group, we always pray. And I myself, I always give it up to God. Mm. I say, God, from this, this, this point on, I said, it's, I'm releasing it to you. It's, it's in your hands. And, and that's who I trust the most. By the way, I should mention we're, uh, you're letting cameras kind of follow you around for an upcoming documentary. You're still developing this. But we know it involves family, this yes. tour. Family, the tour. There are some surprises. I think it'll be uh, quite fun. I, I hope that the audience enjoys it. And I'm, I'm so thankful that it was as, as successful as it was. You know, you're just moseying along for five years and talking about your life and friends and family and work and this and that. And, and it was it was it was difficult at times. At times, it was a breeze, um, very uh, cathartic, therapeutic. Uh, it's like you were in a session at times. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I enjoyed it. The press release that they sent out with this new one it has a picture of the family on the front. It talks about the family, you know, back together for a reunion. Do you think there would be a time when you guys would perform together or I get on a so. stage? I hope so. Why do you think now is the time uh, in the season that you're in in your life now to share a little bit more of you or to share some of those things? You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm not as shy as I used to be, so I'm a little bit more open and 
just sharing more in my life than I ever did before and having a, my own family now and allowing to people to see and understand how we came up and what really was, what really happened and how it came about and maybe to help others who want to follow along in that path. That's the key. I mean, even though it's a different time now, but still you can take and learn and this and that and apply what might work today with what happened then. I love that. Do you think yeah. people, or do you feel like your fans really know you? Or is there still room for us to get to know you? I think there's still room, a little bit of room, but they know me sometimes better than I know myself. So we're also celebrating 50 years of your career mm -hmm. in entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when you were on the Today Show, I told you, um, I talked about the power of representation and the impact you had on you know, especially brown girls like me growing up in Kansas. And I was thinking about it. I mean, from acting, you know, we saw Penny, you know, on, on Good Times, different strokes. And the new then, kind of family yes, that I did with yes. Eileen Brennan and Rob Lowe and yes. Telma Hopkins. And then even on, obviously, on the singing side, you were cranking out hit after hit after hit. At the time, did you have any idea the impact you were having? No, I was just doing what I loved and, and just thankful to God that I was able to do it. No, not thinking of that at all. I was just going and being excited about, okay, what what, what I'm going to do next, what, what what excites me to do next, what influences me, what, what moves me to do next. I wasn't really thinking about that. You can be called many things, a singer, Grammy winner, actor, producer, fashion icon, philanthropist, mom. Is there any title that you hold at the top of the list or do they all have a place? in there. I think they all have a place, but the one that gives me the biggest gratification is Mama. Well, that goes it. without saying. I said Mama. Janet's son, Issa, just turned six in January. What is it about being a mom that just completes you? Everything. Every, every, when you're tired, when you need a break, I just love it all. I love it all. When, when you're in that moment, you see something special happens. It's like, oh my God. And I know I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking of one thing in particular. And I'll never forget it. And it was just so beautiful. And I just thought, that's my baby. That's, that's, you're making me emotional because I get it. I have three little ones. It puts everything in perspective. That's the highest for me, being a mama. Okay, like so that. finally, let's talk about tonight. But me being here all started with good old fashioned <laughs> Today Show Halloween. Can I tell you what I was thinking, Janet? Tell me. Okay, the whole time I was like, I mean, I don't think Janet Jackson would actually be watching the Today Show, but if she is watching the Today Show, I just don't want her to be like, ooh, would that girl please Sit down. <laughs> no, you know I saw this. No way. Yeah, I saw this and I loved it. I saw this and I absolutely loved it. I thought you did a wonderful Thank job. You. Okay, so Miss Jackson thinks I did a good job, but I had a month to rehearse that. I now had to learn a new routine in just hours. To help me loosen up, Janet took me to look at her tour wardrobe. These are the costumes for the show. Wow. Um. Is it heavy? No, this is light. Valentino did this for Ooh. me. This is light. This is my opening cat suit. They did this cape. Pia Paolo did. This is heavy. It makes me feel very, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. And he also did. How gorgeous is this? Mm -hmm. I would wear this. Can I wear this? I'm just yeah, once I finish with <laughs> okay, it, sure. There we go. <laughs> I need it until then. Seriously, like the shoulder, like the cut of it. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful with this, this skirt. Ooh. Look at that. And then the inside. It's so, it's beautiful. And it's, it's, it's got weight That's to it. I was it. about to say, it feels kind yeah. of heavy. And then Christian did this. Christian Soriano did this for me. Ooh. This the more, a little lighter part of the show. Love. And it's, uh, he did it so quickly. And it fits so nicely. It just hugs your body and easy to dance into. And... Ooh. Chris John, he's been a friend of mine for a good while. Mm, mm. Chris John Louboutin, and yes. he, he, I just called him up and I said, Mama needs some new shoes. I mean, <laughs> if Mama needs new shoes, these aren't bad. <laughs> Do you ever want to keep some things? Like some of these, I would want to keep, like this, or the boots, it's, it's or... It's beautiful. Or well, do you I, let I, it go? Well, when I did the auction, I let everything go, but there was one thing I, I didn't let go. 
was that? And that was my uh, uh, original, original. I had two original Rhythm Nation costumes. Mm. And one of them that I wore, I let go. And the other original, I kept from my baby. That's worth it. Oh, my that's sweet. And if, if he wants to throw it out, He's then he can. Once Janet had calmed my nerves from an 11 to about a 10 and a half, it was time for her to take me to meet my fellow dancers. This is our path that you see all this glow tape in there. Is it crew at least guys. a little lighter than this when you're doing no, this? No, it's darker than this. Oh All you see are silhouettes. So Let me sit out. Okay. I'm gonna, as All you right. say, release you uh, into yeah, the wild. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up to God the way I do every okay, night. It's okay. in his hands. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jane. I'm, I'm a step out. Okay. All, All right. right. Have fun. All right. But right now, fun was feeling more like fear. But I had to put those nerves aside. Five, six, seven, eight. Last bit. Hey. And then I found out Janet wanted me to come out hey. during Together Again, the encore song. Crazy! This was huge. She trusted me. I had to nail it. I'll just anything. go upstairs and practice that little thing. I spent the next two hours practicing in my room until it was showtime. And suddenly, my nerves melted away, and I just embraced the magic of the moment. And the next thing I knew, I was dancing with Janet Jackson. Go on, Cheryl. All my love's for you, always been the true angel to me. But just like her music, Janet just wanted me to smile to the very end.
looking for all the subliminal things no one knows about you. There are three of the world's most famous brothers, the Jonas Brothers. Kevin, Joe, Nick. The Jonas Brothers have grown up before our eyes. Welcome to the Jonas Family Household. This is our life. Their chart-topping hits are a soundtrack for generation. <laughs> this week, they hit the bright lights of Broadway. The, the boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. Five-night residency. Five Broadway. Nights. Yes. Each night highlighting a, a different album, including the newest. What, what can fans expect? Fans can expect um, us forgetting lyrics and helping us. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, to be clear, Joe forgetting lyrics. Wow, well, you want to yeah, bet on that, Kev? You want to bet on that? I've done my. I went to rehearsal last week. I never did Broadway, so this is my debut. This is your Broadway debut. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. th these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Broadway um, vets. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so show you the ropes, Kev. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. They're walking me around backstage, but the uh, the fact that my kids are able to come to a show like this week and experience this. Yeah. It brings a, it's a whole other reason to do this every day. Looks like this is going to be one hell of a show. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure uh, it out. Yeah. It might break up before the shows are over. Yeah, exactly. Um, the fans can expect uh, albums from our past starting in 2007. Um, tonight, night one, we're playing a self-titled album, Jonas Brothers. And uh, this is something we thought about, honestly, maybe a month and a half ago. We were thinking how fun it would be to put a show together for fans um, leading up to our new album. And we've never played a, a record before releasing it. So this will be the first to play it in its entirety. Yeah. Um, uh, and this theater, it, it means a lot to us. Nick, when he was, and I'm probably stealing some of your questions, but Nick, when he was, was it seven, eight years old? Eight. eight well, he was 22 on, years ago. He was on that stage performing with Reba McIntyre uh, for Annie Get Your Gun. So it's like full circle. Wow. I'm back. It's been a wild ride for the three New Jersey brothers who thrilled fans in 2019 when they famously reunited after a six year split. Their new album called The Album drops in May. Had the Jonas Brothers not broken up, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have this album. Definitely today. not. You might have the Broadway show, uh, but you know, without any new music. Yeah. It's all the old music. All the old yeah. Exactly. Let's let's talk about this this new album. Yeah. The album. The album. Get the title. What's the story there? How did how did that come about? The story is that we kind of sat down and thought of a bunch of different names, and then we thought about the intention of it all. And if we set out to just say, if you're going to listen to any one of our albums, we think this is the album you should listen to. This is the one that is the the most quintessential Jonas Brothers, where we are now, and it just felt like the right title. The album, this morning I'm listening to it, I mean, it does have this sort of retro 70s feel to it. Was, was that the intention? We, def we definitely pulled from a lot of inspiration. Working with John Bellion, our producer um, in Redder on this project, it was unbelievable. We knew that that's where we wanted to, you know, pull a lot of the inspiration from, but being able to really trust him with this process and help us bring that sound forward and be competitive now and. 2023 versus, you know, not just a tribute album to the 70s. You know, this is who we are. And from things like Jefferson Starship, you know, the Eagles, bands we grew up listening to. The Bee Gees. From our, yeah, the Bee Gees, Bee Gees. From our, with our father. Like, we are a band of brothers that sing together in harmony and other things, but also still a band. So what you see on stage in a live format, we really wanted to be able to bring out in the music when you're listening to it as you're driving down the road in your car. I mean, you guys all live in different cities now, New Jersey and Miami and LA. What was it like physically just being back in the studio together again yeah. as brothers? Well, we had been playing some shows in Vegas and other places, and we, I think, started to feel that chemistry that uh, only really happens when you're together and playing shows. Uh, COVID was, was tough for everybody, but for our sort of creative journey and chemistry, it, it was challenging. Um, so getting back on stage, being in front of our fans was the first step. And then I think once we got in the studio, started working with John, we all felt like uh, it was just clicking and all, you know, firing on all cylinders. And the, the themes too, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about where we were as people first and, and what we wanted to say. Uh, I think one of the things that, that I love about uh, being in this band with, with my brothers is that 
we really get to use our music as a way to express ourselves uh, and, and it's really authentic to us. Um, and that shows, you know, from, from every album we put out and whatever chapter of our journey we were on. But I think this one uh, does a good job of embodying kind of where we are as fathers, where we are as, as husbands and, and just brothers, and family. I enjoyed the video for Wings. The music video for Wings off the new album features White Lotus star Haley Lou Richardson, who happens to be a super fan. She's been a longtime fan and said some really nice things about the, the band and what it means to her to be a fan now in her adult years as opposed to being a fan when she was a kid. And so when we were thinking of the, the concept for the video, you know, we all were like, what, what if we gave her control and let her kind of take the lead here and just do whatever she wanted? Um, she absolutely nailed it. Turns out she has a, a, a dancing background, which none of us do, and she's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, every interview and thing she said about that experience afterwards has meant the world to us. But it's truly like including a, a, a real lifelong fan in our, in our video. So hopefully the fans enjoyed that perspective as well. And it's one of my favorites we've done. You've got tracks on the album called Vacation Eyes. Uh, Little Bird, my personal favorite, being from the South, uh, Waffle House. Um, favorite songs from, from this new album? Well, and we'll start with you, Kev. Um, I think Vacation Eyes. Uh, you know, it's a song, it's about finding that love that you find on vacation. You know, those moments you find that are supposed to only be there on vacation, but you take it home with you and you want to live that moment for the rest of your life. And Which that's, you did, didn't you? That's exactly what happened to me. Uh, that's where I met my wife. We met in the Bahamas. And, oh, wow. Um, on the family vacations, uh, we were young, but it worked out, man. And he like stalked her afterwards. I did, it was fine. It worked out. Hey, worked you know out. what? Sometimes, no, that's, yeah. yeah it <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll leave it there. How about you, Nick? Uh, I've got a couple favorites, but I think Little Bird is probably one of my favorites. Uh, maybe the favorite. Uh, as a new father, you know, really meaningful to me. And I think for, for our fans too, they're the, the same kind of places in their lives as we are, um, you know, and a lot of them having children or have children. Uh, and so I think it's, it's really an anthem about what it is to be a parent and, and that feeling of wanting to protect, you know, your, your little one. And, and uh, you know, Kevin has little birds tattooed on him, uh, which was kind of the, um, I guess the catalyst of the song coming and speaking to John about it. Um, so again, all these really personal themes and this one just hits home for me. So, my favorite song on the album changes constantly. I think today it would be Walls. It's our closing song for the album, and um, we got to share a snippet of it. I actually played the whole song via record player in our Vegas shows. And the song just gets you hyped. And John Bellion is featured on that track. Um, it's the only song we have a feature on. And that one, it, it's, it's hard to really describe what it's like, but it is epic, and um, it, gets, it gets you going. The Jonas Brothers now gearing up for a new era and taking nothing for granted. We've already uh, had success and failed. Um, and we've seen what it feels like to fail. And I think now we're just having fun uh, in this chapter where we're getting to do new and exciting things that we 
uh, we, we dream up and put together in, in you know, a couple of weeks. And um, we have fans that are, are uh, so supportive of us. And, and we feel like it's like weirdly bigger now because we, we're just having fun uh, as opposed to when we were really stressed about it all working out. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more fun. I think a lot of people would hear you say that you failed and they would disagree with that. They haven't watched a few of uh, my personal performances then. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly had a few uh, therapy sessions that I could include them on, but we can leave that out. <laughs> Learning curves. Learning curves. I mean, way to put yeah. it. We all learn from our mistakes. Totally. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I think the, the band kind of going off doing our own things and, and breaking up was the was really the failure I'm talking about. It's like, um, it was a win for us as family and important at that time, but what came out of it is, is that I think we're all able to look at this and say, what's gonna make us happy? And their families expanded along the way. Kevin, Nick, and Joe, all now dads themselves. Let's talk about the other things that have changed since you guys burst onto the scene. Social media. There's, there's, there was no Instagram, no Facebook, certainly no, no TikTok. Uh, back when yeah. you guys yeah, we had to keep up these days. broke through. It, it's really changed dramatically the way that you interact with your fans. Definitely. How, how so? How so, Joe? I think it's, it's fantastic because you're able to connect with fans on a like, millisecond basis where when we were starting, MySpace was just beginning. We got 100 followers on myspace and we were ready to retire we're like we did it guys we made it, we made it. let's go. i think we even celebrated that night and now it's um it's so interesting i mean for the music industry it's fascinating and inspiring because people are discovering music way faster and way quicker um artists that have completely retired or started new careers are having number ones um i, I find it so um, wonderful for the for music in general, and then film and TV. It's really fascinating, and um, we're just trying to keep up. You know, I think that that's it goes back to what Nick was saying. We just have to have fun in that aspect, yeah. Um, because I think it's a way for you to to really connect with fans and and a humanizing level of being like, this is my life. This is what I'm up to. This uh, this is what I'm drinking today. <laughs> Whatever it may be, it's like that easy, simple connection. What are you drinking today? Uh, a lot of I have fluids, waters. Uh, tea. I'm glad water. you're hydrated. Yeah. Glad Two you're coffees. Hydrated. Two coffees. Don't don't do a third. Take a guess. How many? Two drinks. No. <laughs> okay. That's not the guess. How many? How many millions or billions of views? Hashtag Jonas Brothers on TikTok. Would you guess? I literally Eight billion. Wow. Eight billion. billion. Where's, where's, where's with the, 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 the B? Do they give you a plaque for that? Eight uh, billion dollars. Yes. Does that surprise you at all? Um. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. We. It's not something that we go and say, well, how many billions do we have from doing? <laughs> um, but it's inspiring. That's, that's exciting. That's we're, we're, we're so that's honored. Right. And um, I think it's a great way for people to be discovering our, our new music. I'm loving the evolution of the Jonas Brothers. Thank you. It still seems like it's not lost in you guys. How, how remarkably special this journey has been for you. Like you still seem like you're you're like in we, the moment. I do think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we were younger to get it all right. You know, I think now we just kind of do what we need to do to have fun and continue making music that we love. And I think that's why it's working. Yeah.